What's happening, weirdos? This is uh, Caroline Ray, comedy legend. Sweet, sweet, kind, hilarious, funny, engaging, wise, and very, very, very funny, Caroline Ray. I'm so excited to finally have gotten the chance. I've wanted to have her on for years, and she did not disappoint. This is absolutely a did we just become best friends sort of episode, and I'm so glad you guys are here for it. Caroline is actually doing something called Comedy Fantasy Camp. You can go to ComedyFantasyCamp.com. It's her, it's John Lovitz, it's Adam Carolla, it's Jay Leno, uh, Trevor Wallace. Uh, for aspiring comedians to be immersed in like a four-day experience in Hollywood, February 29th to March 3rd, go to ComedyFantasyCamp.com if that sounds interesting to you. Uh, not much to plug for me up top. May the 4th here in LA, I'm doing my Netflix is a joke fest. I'm going to be coming to Chicago, uh, Miami, some other dates all at PeteHolmes.com. Always, always, always means so much when weirdos come out. So I hope you guys can make it to some of those shows. All right. This is it. I love this episode. I hope you do too. This is Caroline Ray. Get into it. Just saw Gary's show. He's so great. He's the king. He's hilarious. Yeah, you guys are very... Yeah. Are we similar? No, simpatico. We in are simpatico. Not yes. All in your styles. I agree. But and deep in a very subtle way. Oh, I preach. Do you mind if we just we're just recording now? Oh, do you want to There's say your that you're deep right in a very? Yeah. Would you mind saying that? Is that your father or Ram Dass? That is Ram Dass. Oh. Wow, you got it in two. Oh. <laughs> Everyone says Alan Alda. <laughs> really? You know who Ram Dass is? Of course I did. My father had a picture of him on his. Bedside table. So hot. Yeah. I was like, this is your boyfriend? Daddy. You are unflappable. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she didn't hear me, but you were already a <laughs> sand already Without even a glimmer in your eye, you were I'm like, I'm an Aries too. We can, I can do this all day. You looked up my sign? Of course I did. Yeah, you're April 13th? Yes. Are you impressed? Yeah. You looked up my sign? <laughs> I was impressed when you knew my sign. You didn't give a shit that I knew your exact birthday. What's March my birthday? March 29th. 30. Really? Yeah, very close. I was so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents think it's the 31st. I get calls and cards and, yeah. My this mother, is why I'm a comedian. Yeah. My mother <laughs> used to say when I had a talk show that was on every day, she goes, darling, it was on again today. <laughs> like, you're kidding. She it goes, no, happened again. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it came on again. I go, well, enjoy it while it lasts. Right? Uh, this Steve, is the backdrop from my old talk show. Wow. Do you have anything from your old set? You know what's really upsetting? Other than... This, yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't feel good about this? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I felt you go like, yeah, I brought this piece of shit with me. <laughs> no, no, no. I um, I had everything, and my American Express card was stolen, <gasps> and I, I was not at a point where I was paying attention enough. Yes, and you mean you it, do now? Every yes, and everything <clears throat> was in storage, and so it was canceled Be like all my storage wasn't paid because, oh, because my american yeah. oh. and it was all sold off no so whoever has that... my talk show set give it back somebody is cramering it right someone's now. cramering it somebody in in like storage wars I yeah got, that's a great episode of storage i know wars. they got like bright yellow we found um, the curtains from the caroline ray show yeah That'd wow. be good. Or I was called uh, Carolyn Carolyn Rhea today on KTLA. Carolyn they said, but Rhea. we, and then they defensively said to me, no, we went to how to pronounce. And I go, but I'm telling you, it's but incorrect. It's me. You're at the real how to pronounce. Yeah. Is the Brian Reagan bit, it's Caroline. It's not about me. Bri it sounds like I it know. is. I know. It's Brian. <laughs> Isn't that good? It's so good. Can I say before we get all swept away, because I'm already <laughs> so smitten with you and really enjoying this. I just want to say I was watch I, I I don't be embarrassed. I was watching one of your older specials, I guess, yeah. uh, one of your HBO ones. Because uh -huh. I'm like, oh, I just want to get your voice in my head. Right, that's an old one. I just did one at the Sydney Opera House in November. Uh, see, I could have why, sent it. That's why I knew, as I said, because when people say I loved your special, I go, which one? Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm telling you the one. Okay. Where I think you're talking about falling in love with your now ex husband. So. <laughs> yeah, Yikes. That's, yeah, that's okay. Yikes. No, it's all right. We were never married. Oh, never married. No. We Good never got for married. You, Sarandon. <laughs> I didn't know you were out there surrendering. It's <laughs> out there being a Sarandon. It, it's Exonerating only... <laughs> Sean Penn. It's your only similarity. It's our only similarity at this I'd point. I'd like a yeah. remake of Little Women, but you're Marmy. 
I would love that. I don't want to be Marmy. No, she's beautiful in that movie. <laughs> she's named Marmy, but everything else is a you little bit sexy Marmy. about There's it. No- <laughs> Susan Sarandon, Ken? Susan Sarandon sat next to me at the Ted Lasso premiere. Wow. I know that's a double name drop. Because I was sitting next to Whoopi on the other other side. (laughs) No, I was sitting next to Whoopi on the other side. I thought the first sentence and didn't say it. But. I liked it. That's that's good name dropping. But if you say I did a movie with like David Hasselhoff, that's lame dropping. So that's what you have. So I want you to name drop and lame drop right now. I'll find a lame drop for you. Okay. So me and I can't think of anyone it wouldn't be so mean about. Me and Skeet Ulrich were down by the bay. I love Skeet Ulrich. Do you know Skeet Ulrich? I I thought, I was like, there's no way she's going to know Skeet Ulrich. He was a baby. He's like a Johnny Depp type. Yeah, but he was on Riverdale. Oh, I didn't know. Were you on Riverdale? No, but for some reason I met him and he was very sweet. Very sweet. And by the way, David Hasselhoff is the sweetest of men. I believe it. He really is. I'd get lost in that chest hair. You know what I mean? Scratch it. You ladies have all like the fun. Hair. No, Wait, do you have it? No, I don't. No, I'm I don't Lithuanian like that. and I'm an Aries. You know all this. <laughs> I just want to say, watch first. You're just so funny. You're so funny. <laughs> and I was watching it, and I was like, I don't know how to say this without having like a sour energy. Underrated. Me, impo- yes. Yeah. Underrated. <laughs> I'm and, underrated. And, and an comedian, inspiration. Yes. <laughs> no, like I'm watching you, and I'm like, well, there's a little me for real. <laughs> like you're very silly, and you do these uh-huh. act outs. I call them playground bits where like you set it up, <laughs> but then you can kind of do it as long as you want. And right. you're doing that. And I'm like, oh, it was her. Cause I watched you when I was, you know, starting up, but then a lot of very big uh, female comedians, I'm like, Oh, big influence. And that's not shots fired. Right. That's just, I don't hear it being mentioned. I'm trying to say it in a loving no, way. It is a very nice I don't want to say it in a I bitter do. I way. I see it in some of the baby that some of the young girls. I I'm see like, it in a lot of one them. specifically. I one really specifically. very much see Amy. We Maybe? can say yeah. it. Uh-huh. It's not bad to say. Yeah. It's like saying you see Regan when you watch me. Like, like, right. It's not a bad thing to I say. I don't, though. I think, I think you're I, much more... I'd like more... to think I shed my Regan. Who do you think? Honestly? Oh, no. Because I if think... it starts with honestly, Bill Cosby, off stage. Uh, you're going to think this is really a bizarre <clears throat> one. So the first person I'm going to say is... Can't wait. ...who I think how your brain actually works. Mm. But then I'm just going to go for it. If Robin Williams was channeled through Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. It's a wonderful life, Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. If but, Robin Williams' brain in oh, Jimmy Stewart. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, your money's in the bank. It's not here. <laughs> An angel gets its wings. What's it going to do? It has a Red Bull. It's out there swinging. Oh, it gives you wings. Oh, we have an energy drink. Now I have an erection. Ooh, and diarrhea. Paranoia. Oh, what's happening? Paranoia. I only want one. I don't want two. What am I going to do with two noias? Oh, the Noid. Avoid the Noid. Have a Domino's. Domino's pizza. Set them up. Knock them down. Don't, don't, don't make me do Robin. Oh, Caroline, great to meet you. Have you met him? You met him a million. Oh, I loved him so You loved so him much. so? Yeah. It was one of the happiest days of my life when we were doing Hollywood Squares and he was sitting below me and I said, I'm on top of Robin Williams. I never thought that's what happened. Oh my God. You got that genie blown up your skirt. He's so... <laughs> Never had a friend like me. Ooh, there you go. Special. Never had a friend with benefit like me. Ooh. Oh, Caroline. Ooh. Did you know I met him once. But, and did you do but, him for him? No. You think it's that good? <laughs> what? Well, I think like you... an impression has to be pretty good if you're like, I do you. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Robin, nice to meet you. Oh, meet, meet, meet. Oh, veal. Oh, small cow in a cage. Ooh, I felt like that. Oh, private school. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to do that. It'd be like, fuck you. The also, first time I ever met him was 1989. I was at, it was uh, Stand Up New York. I, re- I was just thinking about Stand Up New York and how unwelcoming it is when you walk in. Oh. I just mean the the, right. the feng shui. I like the stage room. Right. But you walk in and you're like, am I interrupting the bar? Like it's shooting out at you? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's the feeling of starting comedy in New York is you walk in these rooms, that very LA word, but energetically are just like, is this right? Like, am I interrupting? <laughs> Well, That's in I LA, felt. I feel like I'm just going to get up in the living room and try and be witty. No, yeah. I want a club. I know what you and mean. And that's why I said New York comics are so much better at crowd work because you're in the room. You're yeah. talking to them. How can I ignore and you? And they have to be, I'm going to say, they have to be a little bit more cerebral. I was going to say smart. Quick. Quick. Because you're cornered and you can't move. 
So right. there's fewer bits where you're like, what's an LA stereotype? Is you're like, my dick's out there flapping, it's flapping. <laughs> well, I opened you know, with that, of course. Well, I was doing, I just watched you do <laughs> yeah. it. It was to great effect. <laughs> no, but you think of Jimmy Gaff, who you started with. Yes. We're going to get back to that Robin story. Okay, good. And that Susan story. Oh my God, this story. is like looking in a mirror. My brain works just like yours. Yeah, welcome to the show. It's so fun. Let's just be safe and love each other just for a couple hours. Then you can go back out there and be afraid and a little anxious, a little worried. <laughs> That'll be me. I, I can't speak for you. <laughs> but um, Jimmy Gaffigan yeah. is the classic New York comedian to me. Or Attell, another guy you started with. No, Attell is the king. Talk about people who have influenced other comedians. There's a whole, there's Attell, a whole Attell squadron. Is, Attell is ground zero. He's, he's everyone's. Yeah, I don't know about a ground zero. Reference? Bad? For a New York comedian. Yeah. Maybe a European. Because <laughs> ground zero over there still means when you crack open a hard-boiled egg at morning. <laughs> That's ground zero, love. <laughs> we have a different ground zero over here. It's a sad ground zero. I, uh, all right. Um, the OG. Oh, I'm just saying those guys that can stand still. Atel, Gaffigan, Marin. These are all people you started with. And they could just <laughs> they can just be a stick on the stage. Yeah. I'm not putting them down. Yeah. Gaffigan can just be like that. And that's because I could never do it. he started in rooms where he was literally in the corner of a Thai restaurant. Right. You know what I mean? In LA, you start and you can, you know, Dane... Cook is the, he started in Boston and New York and he did what he did in New York, but in LA it, it felt even better, bigger stages, more room is all I'm saying. That's so funny because when I'm at the comedy store, I find myself <clears throat> just like standing there because I'm so trained in New York. I like standing I there. I just stand, no, but in a theater, I'm going to use the whole space and run around and play. I, I mean, the minute that. I can physicalize them, that's, isn't there something that you do on stage that, okay, now I'm free. Now I'm like, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm like, it's playtime. My body will tell me how I really felt about the show. And if I'm moving around, right. it's two things. I did a show a couple nights ago and the crowd was just a little tight and I caught myself pacing like Chris Rock. I started moving like a lion, like right. a caged lion to show, demonstrate a certain fearlessness, right. even though I was probably getting like tight. But it, to counteract that, I was like, let's get my body fearless and maybe I'll follow. And it worked. It helped. Are you naturally self-aware? Don't interview me, Carolyn. Are you naturally self-aware, Holmes? Uh, it's Holmes. It's Pietro Holmes. Are you naturally self-aware? Because you have yeah. a lot. Yes. Very self-aware. Very yeah. sensitive, too. Yes. I Believe me. Right. I have an astrological card line. Did you look that up? What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you're into astrology. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. What fun. I just found out the hour that I'm born. My mom had no idea. <laughs> and I did? emailed the hospital and I was like, when was I born? And they were like, we're not allowed to give out information, but between us. And they told me, I don't, I have it written down. It's in the afternoon. Ask me a question. Any question. About astrology? Just any question. Okay. Ready? Uh-huh. Was there traffic? Don't interview me, Pito. <laughs> oh my God. That's what that feels like. See, I wanted to be loving, but that's jarring. It was jarring. It was <laughs> jarring. Yeah. Ah, natural instinct. I need. I'm a bit much. No, In you're fact, not. No, I know. I, you're tons. I, I love it. I appreciate no. that. My my limiting belief is I'm too much. No, do you that's what, ridiculous. Do you know what yours is? Um, I must date an alcoholic. Too. I must. Date I must. Alcoholic. I must. No, but you know what? My baby daddy wasn't at all. But since then, yeah, it's just like boozies. Oh. Go for the boo oh. Choosies the boozies. The, oh, I choose oh, the boozies. She dates Jim Beam. Ooh, Jack Daniels. Ooh, he's over there. Captain Morgan. <laughs> you know what? I was at Cantor's and I was all excited because I was going to order a milkshake because I'm a child. And when uh, I was like, I was literally about to go, ooh, milkshake. And then he ordered first. And I'm like, I'll have a double vodka. I was like, at a diner? Yeah. At a diner? We're that having ice cream. What are you talking about? Not to make it about me, but to relate. Yes. When old Holmesy was a booze bag. Were you a booze bag? I was a booze bag. Uh, what, from when to when? <laughs> <laughs> it really started I got divorced so 28 I really started like when you medicating. got divorced did you just go <laughs> I was up <laughs> actually when I got married that's more interesting it is more Who'd that's you, when I realized what I could, sign did you marry uh, not to interview you but what sign did you marry she was born in December mm. I don't know what that is like mid-December December, December Sagittarius. 14th I think Sagittarius yeah no no good Aries Sagittarius no no good Val is Feb 28 perfect really well a Pisces and Aries is soulmates Shut the fuck. No, no, that, that's soulmates, yeah. But what a Pisces will also, you'll say to them, they can be Pisces aggressive. So if you say, where do you want to go to dinner? And you go, and she'll go, you pick. You pick. Yeah. Okay, well, let's have Chinese. Okay, last time I had 
Chinese, I did get MSG poisoning, but I'm sure they don't have it there, so it's totally fine. You're like, okay, well, where do you want to go? Aggressive. Oh, well, what about? Uh, I was thinking of Italian. Italian is so good. I am gluten intolerant, and I can't have the pasta, but I'm sure they have something like a salad. I'm like, just fucking pick. Okay, you, you are, pick. You're right on the money. Yeah. I wish Val was here because she just not direct, us off. and we are so direct. We're like, just say what you mean, dude. This, the emotional you know, stew is too much for Ram Dass me. Ramdas is an Aries as well, so I I did know that Ramdas was an Aries. When I talked to Val, I I. I speak I that. artwork. Oh, thanks. Is it yours? I painted most of those. Yeah, you did? I, I painted the rabbit. I painted the Joker. I painted the cat. I want to paint again. It's so interesting. I am an artist. We we Aries. We left it. We have to multitask. Yes. Yes. And I you, make I make crazy things. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? Your alcoholic boyfriends sixty nining? <laughs> Let's just see what you want to see. <laughs> no, don't think about it. <laughs> don't think about it. You know, it was really good. The, the, the one alcoholic was maybe the, well, the one. He was he was incredibly stupid. And he once actually said to me that his ex-wife. Down Robin, so we okay, get back to it. That his ex-wife lived at 0413 Ray Street. 0413? No. R-H-E-A Street. And I was like, that's my birthday and my name. <gasps> don't you think that's weird? Whoa. And he goes. No. And I go, I go, how come you never mentioned that to me? And he goes, I swear he said this. I don't know. I just said a suppository now. I was like, oh, this is like human wordle all the time. I'm like, I think you mean epiphany. I don't know how I got it, but I did. And he said, potato, potato. Like, oh, those are not interchangeable. Suppository and epiphany. There's not a little suppository after Christmas for Orthodox Russians. I'm dead. <laughs> and potato brings us back to vodka. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this, this man's always on potatoes. Always on potatoes. I oh dated my God. a woman who was really into it. Her mom was an astrologer. And I'm oh, saying yeah. this with full respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and she dated me and her ex, her previous big relationship, same birthday as me. I was like, what's going on? It Why? was weird. Why? We it's had weird. similar names too. And, and she, her mom gave me a really good reading. It was really right on. She was very, very talented. It's just, I don't know. I'm, you're obviously a clearly intuitive person, right? I think so. Yeah. I'm a feeling and a heady. I'm both. Are you an extrovert with a little need to be introverted? I almost screamed, don't interview me. But I won't. You know what? I think that's what to your show camera. should be called. Don't, inter don't, don't inter interview me. But people who... I can't help it. I'm naturally inquisitive. No, I know. I'm an Aries. That's our nature. I'm loving it. Go ahead. Ask me. I won't ask a single question. No, no, no. No, no. I am... Only me. Intro no, it's all about me. Stop it. More about me. <laughs> oh, wait. Did I not did I, did I leave you hanging? No, it was great. But I do want to tell you because, because it's going to go back to you. What does that sound like every time we do that? Is it an annoying little hit? No, it's nothing. It's okay. nothing. I don't know. It's just the pure confidence. Is that an Aries thing too? It's yeah. nothing. It's, it's fine. nothing. It's fine. It's nothing. But I do. Have, if if I was the kind of guest that would ask questions, I would be curious what you haven't done yet that you would like to do. But oh, I'm not gonna ask let's that. get to that. I wanted to say I speak Valerie. So I know when she says something like, I don't know, or I don't even feel like, do, or I'm not sure. I'll just go like, you clearly want to do that. Well, let's go or whatever. And right. it's beautiful. It's like a beautiful dance. And she brings out all of this heart and this like, I always joke that she makes me like Bigfoot. And I'm like, friend, <laughs> like making friends and like with no agendas. Like in my 20s, it was all like alliances. You know um, what I mean? Not social climby, backstabby, but just kind of like, why would I be friends with someone who I don't admire and whose career mirrors the one I want? You know what I mean? Oh, really? And yeah, and now I hang out with lots of regos and I love it. I shouldn't call them regos. We call them civilians. Civilians. We used to. We got a lot of notes about that. We were like, stop calling non-comedians civilians. You're oh. not in the military. <laughs> but I like it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. No, but d dating a... Um but I think rego is way worse, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never said it before, or oh, oh, I'll okay. never I say it again. <laughs> I just meant regular, but even regular sounds horrible. It's, it's It sucks. Right. Non-comedians. How about less than? Yeah, inferiors. <laughs> I, I'm friends with a lot of pieces of shit now, like kind of uninspiring, you know, fearful cowards. Okay, you, I'm not, but you you did start about getting sober, and then you just oh, yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. finish. I was going to... You did have a talk show, didn't you? I did. I'm sorry. You're very Tried good. Tried so hard not to. No, let's bring it. We'll we'll steer it back to you, though. It's so going to fall on someone's head. And there's another Ram Dass thing in there. Look. Yeah. By the way, terrible storage with open slats. Just going to say. Buddy, I've thought about putting that up there. Like, ha I don't it. know, maybe a ceiling, but okay. 
Throw in a ceiling. Throw Don't a look ceiling. too much up there because there's like a mold stain and I got to paint over it. Which, oh, wow. Which, yeah, I won't fix it. Oh, that. my God. Black mold instantly affected me now that I know it's. And she's gone. And she's gone. Okay. What do you do, though? Do I have to have that like cut out? Oh, you have to have the mold people come. They come. They, it looks like they're in Ghostbusters. And you probably have a ghost behind the mold. So yeah. it'll probably be a double duty. Fuck. Anyway. Boozer, no no longer. The telltale sign was when you're at brunch ordering a double Bloody Mary with a splash of tomato juice. <laughs> Just a splash. So I'd be drinking this like clear pink drink and, and downing it before the food got there. I just like, I'm a more, more, more person. Do you struggle with that? Only with fudge. I never, I don't, I don't drink. Oh, good. I don't do drugs. Did but that? I'm, I have <clears throat> probably... A thousand teacups. <laughs> oh, you have other compulsions? Yeah, they're weird. Collecting? My mother was an antique dealer, so yeah, I collect. I collect alcoholics, and um, <laughs> I was going to do this joke on the Tonight Show, but they thought it was too mean. Can't wait. I, I said, "Who's Tonight Show?" Um, Jimmy's. 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 Yeah, thanks. I'm not that old. And <laughs> well, you've been uh, Jack a... Park. <laughs> Two cavemen. We used to meet I at a rock. Ha ha! Drew Jones. I'm going to draw the punchline. Oh yeah. god. <laughs> I just wanted to know. You've probably done the other one in no, my I never, defense. I never did. Me neither. Johnny, never did. J- Johnny Carson. I meant no. Jay. Oh, I did do Jay. Yeah. 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 I didn't think you did Johnny. Oh, okay. Oh, no. you know what? I don't think of Jay as the Tonight Show. I think of Johnny. I think of, you know what I mean? Oh, I don't. Well, I find that uh, very insulting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. He's one of the teachers that I'm um, no, I know. doing the comedy Don't camp. plug it. Don't you plug comedy camp in Hollywood on... February 29th through March 2nd Second. Second with Adam Carolla, you, and Trevor Wallace. Trevor Wallace and Jay Leno teaching aspiring comedians. And that's it. That's it. How to do comedy and enjoy it like a fantasy camp for comedy nerds. Don't plug it. I'm not going to. Don't tell them they can get tickets at comedy camp something something dot com. Just Google comedy camp. That's what we're going to say. Comedy fantasy camp? I don't know. Comedy fantasy camp. Don't plug it. Don't you plug it. Don't, don't plug you it. plug it. Don't you interview That's the other me. name. Okay, so. Don't interview and don't plug it. That's the name of your new your new thing. But usually, I, have to, I have to know. It's just a question. It What's is. What's the dog's name? Scout. Scout. You made me change gears, though. Tequila Mockingbird Scout? Tequila Mockingbird? Your Tequila ex-boyfriend? Tequila Mockingbird. <laughs> no, let me be perfectly clear. My baby daddy was not him. He, he was not. The one that I was talking about, how in love I yeah, was. Isn't in a his special name like a Greek? He Kostaki gave me something long and hard on our wedding night. Wow! Classic. No. Classic. I didn't say that. No. <laughs> you think I thought that's from the movie Punchline oh, with okay. Sally Field? No, it's like. And it's a street joke. Oh. <laughs> I'm not here to insult you. I'm here to celebrate you. But the old joke is he gave me something long and hard on our wedding night. His last name. That's funny. That's no, a, my joke was always my daughter's name is Ava Ray Economopolis. I've already explained to her that the Economopolis is silent. <laughs> That's great. The Economopolis is silent. It's a Greek word that means difficult to get along with. <laughs> Fantastic. Because he was a com- he is a comic. He is. Com- he's a very funny comic. Yeah, yeah. He, um, we were working together, and we were in Florida, and the the girl said, "Now, uh, I'm going to bring up uh, Kostaki. Uh, no, your your boyfriend first. I go, no, his name is Kostaki Economopolis. I go, I'm going to write it out. Okay. Kostaki and she goes, she goes, baby, I got it. And I go, okay, because I called him Biscotti for two years, but that's fine. And then with utter confidence, she said, give it up for Econococalocopus. And I was like, are you Greek? Because nobody ever gets it on the first try. Econococalocopus. And now I'm going to tell you my favorite joke. Econococalocopus. Because you're too young, but I know you'll get it because you have an old soul. Mm. I was supposed to name my daughter after his father, which was Vasilis. Vasilis. Which sounds like it'd be cleared up with antibiotics. I said, I'm not naming her Vasilis. Yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah, Vasilis. Yeah. Where's your, get your brother Chlamydia. Uh, Very similar to Bachulis, which is my Lithuanian. Some, there's some Bachulises in my family. Oh, that's right. You're my Lithuanian. Cousins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, Here now it is. I can't oh, I said, if I have to name my daughter Vasilis, her middle name is going to be Diller. Diller. Vasilis Diller. Vas- Vasilis Diller? Like, oh, <laughs> Phyllis Diller. <laughs> You're right. Too young. Why Why all the I, alcoholics? I know, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm steering you to that. Why all the alcoholics? I don't know. The last two... Well, here's... Was your dad an alcoholic? I'm not trying to be funny. No, um, probably, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But you know what? I do find a lot of deep souls that are tortured. Yeah. 
are like Alan Watts are alcoholics. Brilliant, alcoholics. but I'm not saying that it's worth it. No, but I would definitely say that. Yeah, for some reason, I get it. And I don't it, drink. I was like, they. I, I feel like they. I'm like, do I smell like rum? I, I just if you get close, do I have like vodka activated skin? Yes. Why are you drawn to me? Well, you know, to go with you on what you're saying, have you heard like the brighter the light, the bigger the shadow? Have you heard that? No, and like I've heard get, every catchphrase. Yeah, phrase there's there. a new one. Well, wow. think about it. You, there's a beautiful big light and you get really close to it. Right. And there's a huge shadow behind you. So there right. are a lot of brilliant and special troubled people of all different types. But you right. just happen to... You know what I think it is? I think probably because my dad drank, I never wanted to. I I hated when anybody got called an alcoholic because I thought they dismissed their whole soul and personality. Yeah. yeah. And so I think I went out of my way to be nice. Like, I'm like, I don't care if you're an alcoholic. Maybe my father was and he was worth loving. And so you're going to be worth loving. You yeah, know, it's yeah. deep. It's so ridiculous. So at some point, when are we done? Yeah. Yeah. When do you say it's not, even though they are worthy of love, do you have to push that boulder over the hill? I know. Do you? Am I Sisyphus, the third Greek yeah. child? Yeah. Are you Sisyphusian? <laughs> Sisyphus. I'm very Sisyphificated. <laughs> this next comedian is very Sisyphificated. Uh, yeah, no, Two I get it. Two classic scholars are like, that is the greatest joke we've ever had. <laughs> they turn up their old timey <laughs> radios. You know, the wooden one. You know, the wooden one. Adjusting. And then they listen to the shadow. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I have a lot. Are you dating an alcoholic right now? No. I'm, Single? No, the last one's gone. Yeah. You can have a Vita, Vita Coco. See, I almost said Vita. I really feel like this should be a sponsorship or you have OCD. Which is it? It's it's both. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's uh, those are for you. Is it a prop? And this is Magic Mind. You can have that. What's that? It's like a, it's a nootropic matcha drink. It has a little bit of caffeine and it helps you think. A I nootropic? Yeah. Do you know what that means? No. Nootropics are just like brain vitamins. Oh, Not well, stimulants, but okay. they like nutrition for your noodle. This sounds like an ad, but I love it. I just had one. Can I tell you something which I thought was quite hilarious? Yes, please. I really don't do drugs ever. Yeah. Except. Can't wait. No, they came out in gummy form, and that is a terrible thing for somebody who eats candy. Yeah. So I was going out with said alcoholic, and I was completely nervous. <laughs> and my friend said, just take one of these. You'll totally relax. Okay? So... Are you? Do you do drugs? I don't even know. I dabble. Okay, so there's sativa and what's yeah. the other one? Indica. Indica. So into couch, right? Into couch. Makes you sleepy and, and sativa, sativa makes you happy. Saturday night, sativa. Okay, so I think that the intention was to take sativa and I was given indica. And at, at the point in the night where it was getting romantic, I do you remember when Nemo tries to speak whale? Nemo. It, it, you know when she. When it, I was like, do you? One, two, and in my mind, I was like, but I was like, ooh, come to me. I was, I was like, this is not for me. You got so high, you became Dory. I did. I got, yeah. I got Dory high. Which is Ellen, your other dear friend. Mm -hmm. Is it? No, not close with Ellen. Not a fan. Not a fan. Wow. Mm -hmm. Out in the open, on the air. Oh, she was very, very mean to me. But this is the dish I usually get when we say cut. Here oh. it is. Why, how was she mean yeah. to you? Oh, she did something really soul crushing a long time ago. She said something? Well, she did something. Me. I, I'm, you know what? She's been so unkind to so many people I love. Mm. I'm, I'm not a fan. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. That's all I'll say. Yuck. Yuck. We won't drag the vibe down. No. <laughs> Who's been kind to you? Who helped you? Who helped you? Everybody's been kind to me. Um, Whoopi. Whoop. Whoopi. Is she wonderful? Been, Whoopi's totally wonderful. Whoopi's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful Goldberg. Yeah. Whoopi she is wonderful. wonderful. You know what? <laughs> Strong. Have you had a bad experience with Ellen? I feel like no, I've just, no, oh, no, okay. no. I, I've never met Ellen. No, I did her show once, but I, I've never had any experience other than a nice one. You know who was so lovely? Bob Einstein. Bob Einstein. He would, was so sweet to me. Uh, you mean uh, Super Dave? Super Dave. Super Dave Osborne. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry David. Larry David helped. Well, I was in his. I was in the pilot of Curb. You were? Yes. Oh wow. Well. No, I mean, he's always been super nice. I, I don't have, you know. There's, I, I have very few people that I go, oh, you were a horrible person. Yeah. Well, one of the people that helped me early on was Jim Gaffigan. That's oh. that's one of the... I just this this. Don't you feel the frequency is Jim so nice? How have Jim and I never played brother and sister? Right. 
Yeah. I could because see it. Because when I go to Scotland, this joke made him laugh, but it's true. Inevitably, someone comes up to me and says, whenever you're on the telly, people say that I look quite a bit like you. All the people say that. Yeah. And I always want to say, you do look like me, but you also look like a snowman and a baby. <laughs> it's just we're doughy and cartilage based. That's all it is. There's a very few bones and a lot of dough. The wind blows. Look at me. Wind blows. Wind blows. <laughs> you said look at me. And <laughs> well, your eyes were closed. I know. Don't tell me to look at you. Don't interview me. Don't tell me to look at you. That's so good. Don't reference good. Ron Doss before me. <laughs> this energy is so good. The comedy is so fun. So Val, mm -hmm. my beautiful wife, we're trying to like stoke the fire of her. I don't know how else to put it. Have you seen the movie Collateral? Mm, no. Who cares? But there's a very meek character played by Jamie Foxx, and there's a very bold character played by Tom Cruise. And okay. over the course of a murderous night, Jamie Foxx learns how to be more oh, right. assertive. Okay. I remember the trailer. And it's an action movie, but right. it, Val and I were watching it last night. I'm trying to like, because she's trying to like step into her power and her voice, and it's just so funny. Like right. you do it so lightly, like look at me. It's so funny and, um, <laughs> and amazing. And it comes from this place of like, Self-love always sounds like we're jerks that like look in the mirror all day, narcissists. Now we're getting right. Sisyphus, narcissists. We're getting all of them. But there's like a self take up space. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Has that always been easy for you? Is that one of the reasons why you, I'm like uh, fucking Jiminy Glick. Is that why you catapulted through the comedy scene? <laughs> but Is Jiminy Glick not the greatest? So funny. So funny. Martin Short brought me on stage. Why do you mention him? I don't know. Martin Short brought me on this stage. This is me thinking Jiminy Glick's a real person. What's? Don't change topics. Don't change topics. Don't change topics. Don't change topics. <laughs> Talking about Jiminy Glick. If Jiminy Glick were he a real person. He brought me on stage and yeah. said, oh, Caroline and I love to watch television and watch the Save the Children commercials. And she laughs and laughs. And then he brought me on stage. I was like, I am going to shoot you, Martin Short. <laughs> That is the then, best, funniest intro. <laughs> she laughs and laughs. Ladies and gentlemen, Caroline Ray. Oh, yeah. I and didn't then know I came off stage and he said, oh, I'm angry with you over two of those jokes. Wish oh, because the I true compliment. You mean. Yeah, it was the best compliment The true ever. compliment. Oh, my God. If you've ever seen him be carried across the stage where he pretends to be in a bagpipe. Have you seen it? No. Oh, it's it's he's a genius. He gets carried across he the He pretends state? he's a bagpipe. He gets a big guy in the audience to come across and then he pretends to play he plays him. He goes to go like this and he goes and he makes all the bagpipe sounds. Wow. You know what? That looks a bit like me. Somebody in Scotland <laughs> watching it. Wow. I thought I looked like Carolyn Ray, but I look like this wee Caroline Pete Holmes. What I say? Pete Holmes. In a Scottish accent. You said Carolyn. I can't be beholden to saying your name correctly if I'm doing a Scottish accent. Last night, I had to do a morning show. So whatever, at midnight, I'm doing the morning show in Scotland. And my phone is here, and I never know which freaking lens to look at. Wait, and you're they're zooming over here, your show? Yes, zooming it. <laughs> and I'm sure they're like, I didn't know Caroline Ray was blind. Because I'm just like... Well, it's, I'm going to be in Scotland and then I'm going to be, I'm going to be in Edinburgh. Like I had no idea where to look. Oh no. Have this done, was last night? Have you done the Fringe? Don't ask me about the Fringe. That's your fourth show. Have you done it? The Fringe Festival to me, and you correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. sounds like a nightmare. It's, 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 you, it's, it's, it's both. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, you mean it's good and bad? Well, you do 30 shows in a row. I'm out. <laughs> what is this? Let's take comedy and turn it into coal mining. Let's turn it in, like, let's turn it into. I, I don't want to make do fun have of jobs. They a canary but like, in the front row every night. I killed. <laughs> it was the because canary. there were fumes. <laughs> it's because there were deadly fumes. Uh, I just. They don't laugh either. They just go like this. Because they've. Okay, it's an. Or I. Look. It's an orgy for everybody. The performer is doing too much. The audience is doing too much. And comedy is like sex. The best sex of your life is a surprise. It ha what? I just, the date went really well and we had sex. That's amazing sex. You don't want to have sex just by rote 30 days in a row. It's, it's, it, or get drunk 30 days in a row. Or You're eat right. cake 30 days in a row. So the audiences are spoiled. I'm talking about other festivals I've been to. Right. You go out and do the best set of your life and you're like, these fuckers came from a... Bill Burr show. Now right. they're at my show. Then they're going to go to the Midnight Ray Romano show. No, you're right. Like, 
Who is this for? I'm never doing another it's festival. all the donuts in the world. You know that Simpsons? No. Homer goes to hell and they go, you like donuts, eh? How about all the donuts in the world? And there's a machine. The joke is that he goes, more. He, 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 does, he doesn't hate it. It's supposed to be hell. But he just goes, in between bites, he goes, more. But to me... I like, I'd like to hear your philosophy. No, that's such a... No, you've completely expressed why I'll never do it again. Really? Yes. Sorry, Fringe. No, the last time I just did it for um, a week. Okay. But I've done it for that straight month. The 30. And they, they review you as if it is like your, your company review, like you're on LinkedIn. I go, this is just comedy. And by the way, to quote Jerome Seinfeld, it was reviewed in the room. It was reviewed in the room. It is a good impression. One guy who That's had to true. take a shit, who watched too much comedy and maybe got broken up with two weeks ago is going to write up a little summary of my little skits. Eat fucking shit, dude. There was a woman next to you and she was having a disease healed. She was laughing so hard. <laughs> and you're going to be like, it was a little derivative. Fuck off. Roll that up and shove it up your ass. <laughs> it was reviewed in the room. You don't review comedy. Comedy is review. You are. I'm very worked up. No, you're very accurate. Yes. That was a good Jerry. Thank you. Very Thank good. you. <laughs> you should have been on the show. You could have been Jerry's girlfriend. You know what? I had an audition. No, they, it wasn't even an audition. They asked me to do, like it was a small part on Seinfeld. And that was one of the reasons I fired my managers. What? That they didn't, they didn't tell me. They also didn't tell me. They had passed. I, I got a call the night before Sabrina the Teenage Witch was testing, and they and the woman who created the show called me and said, "Will you please reconsider?" And I'm like, "What will I reconsider?" And she's like, "Well, your managers passed on the show six weeks ago." And I was like, "What show?" I'm dying. Yeah, I'm dying. And it was so long ago that I had to go across the street where <laughs> it looked like it, it was faxed and all the pages were curled. So it was like it was like I was reading like. <laughs> Ye old witch, ye shall speak to the Sabrina character. Yeah, it was very. <laughs> did, you and do, then, did you do doo, that? Doo, doo, doo. Doo. Did you unfurl the script? I did, I script? unfurled it. Yeah. I, it was a scroll. I shall read yeah, yeah, from the great yeah, yeah. script of Sabrina. My name is Karen Ray. <laughs> I'm five foot. I'll tell you. Eight and a half, but my daughter will tell you I'm five, six. <laughs> wow, like, like the NBA. <laughs> You bump it up My daughter's a bit. six feet tall. Wow. How old is she now? 15. Wow. Total love of my life. Oh, good. She doesn't, she didn't turn on you in the night? Doesn't matter. I love that child so much. You know what? She's the best example in the world. Like, I see whatever mood you're in. I, I don't care. I love you more than anything. You... Occasionally, I'm like, okay, that hurt mommy's feelings. And mommy is a person. <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> you are not a victim. I'm like, oh. Okay, that snapped was me that right Was that your own that. voice or that was her? That was her. She yells, don't cry, you're not a victim? Yeah, sometimes. Sounds like you're in a... No, she's the best. Bad situation. <laughs> no, she's really... No, can I say, look, she's my daughter's best. five, oh. but I say, because people are like, enjoy it now. And I go, even if Leela turns on me, no. just to join you, I go, she's so cool. Yeah. Of course she's embarrassed by her dad. She's the fucking coolest. Well, look at her dad, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I did it to camera, <laughs> right? But I also misunderstood. I thought you were saying I was cool, but really it was you're saying I'm embarrassing, right? But I did the wrong, I did the wrong read. <laughs> then right? you go to the next camera. Wrong. <laughs> That's embarrassing. So they pass and you can them? This yeah, I hate I this can't. story. Yeah, it's a terrible story. And Seinfeld? Do you know who you were going to be on Seinfeld? I don't remember, but I was like, oh... And we were on the same lot, so I could have like run over Radford? there. Radford? Yeah, no. Yeah, CBS Radford. Quite C famously is where they shot Seinfeld. I say quite famously to be condescending. Quite, quite, famously. quite famously, everyone knows. Was it Radford? Yeah, I, stage. I, I, I know, but I remember walking over there after a show. So what was I on in Radford? I don't remember. Yeah. I've had many lives. You know what? Really, don't you feel this way? Like life, great, wonderful. Ava Born, life start. Everything before that. Katie like, knows I've said that. Yeah, I go, everything I th yeah. is like amazing, wonderful, but like full Technicolor when she was born. Speed agree. She's full. I was listening to one of my <laughs> eight million self helpy kind of things last night. Love self help. Love self help. Need it. Of course. Who else am I going to help? You? Help me. I can't change you. Change me. I'm out there helping. Can't help you. Help yourself. <laughs> 
Then God helps you. God helps you if you do self-help. <laughs> the old adage. Ooh, adage. Ooh, Adderall. Ooh. <laughs> It just starts collapsing in on itself. <laughs> just pure madness. You may have noticed a new Pete's Pick right there on the set is our friends at Vita Coco. I love Vita Coco. I've been a fan for many years. Whenever I'm feeling sluggish or dehydrated or I just want a treat, honestly a treat without loading myself up with all the added sugars and random chemicals found in way too many beverages out there, I reach for a Vita Coco. It's real, it's natural, it's from the earth, but it's still fun. Vita Coco is the number one coconut water brand in the U.S. Get some balance in your life with healthy beverages that are actually a good time. Vita Coco comes in wonderful flavors that you saw right there on set, not just coconut, but pineapple and peach and mango, which are incredible. Coconut water has nutrients, I'm sure you know, to supercharge you and make you feel good. Helps amazingly with recovery, as a post-workout drink, Vita Coco replenishes you and keeps you performing at your best and shining strong throughout the day. Vita Coco is also a wonderful mixer. Throw in some tequila, agave, and a squeeze of lime, and you have an amazing cocktail that also has electrolytes and nutrients in there, which means a better feeling morning after. Or if you're like me, you can make, use it to make some incredible mocktails. And because of the electrolytes, all coconut water can also bring you back to life the day after. So take 25% off, get some fun in your life, get some hydration, get some flavor, some natural flavor, 25% off, get Vita Coco shipped to your door by using code WEIRD20 on VitaCoco.com. Prefer to shop in store, find a Vita Coco at most big name grocers like uh, Walmart, drug stores like CVS, and local convenience stores and bodegas. But for 25% off and support the show, go to VitaCoco.com and use promo code WEIRD20 for 25% off. We're also brought to us by our friends at BetterHelp. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially when we're always growing and changing. Like before I went to therapy, I had no idea what codependency was, which is funny to think back on, how to end a relationship in a healthy way, or to set up boundaries with my family or people I worked with. But that's what therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk things through. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. We're always saying on the show what a big difference talk therapy has made in my life, greater than the sum of its parts. It seems like it's just chatting, but it is so much more when you do it with a licensed therapist. The more you know about yourself, the more you can easily maneuver through life with less suffering, more clarity, relationships, grief, loss, anxiety, you name it. Talking about it with a professional helps. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Don't wait. It's entirely on online. Design can be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can even switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo today for 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash weirdo support your life support the show all right let's get back to caroline you what were you saying they said it was i can't remember who it was it was a philosopher from the 1700s yeah and and they were very adamant about the fact that this is the real definition of happiness tell me you can never aspire to personally be happy happiness is only when you want happiness for someone else, either through your own art, you want to do it for the sake of sharing it, or you are more worried about someone else being happy, and wow. that gives you that purpose. I love and that. And once you have a child, you want them to be happy. There's the best thing I read in this book. That's what I always say. I go... Dianetics? Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> I um, <laughs> didn't expect that ending. I <laughs> it's a twist ending. My mother always gave everybody books for Christmas every year, and she would always go like this. Darling, you'll love it, and you'll cry when Mary dies at the end. You won't see it coming. Every, every year. She would walk through the lines, like when people used to line up for movies, and we'd be leaving the movie going, they were all killed at the end? It was such a shock. I go, Mom, none of them have seen it. Well, they're going to find out. Oh, my God. Yeah, she always. gives the Bible. Don't worry, he comes back. There's a sequel. <laughs> Don't give up with the old part. It, it picks up. The new part's not nearly as good, but the old part the, is good. That's called Judaism. Yes. I studied Kabbalah for eight years. I, I, I identify as... Kabbalish? Kabbalish. Um, Go on. I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, 
I realized that I was reading this book and it changed my life. And then I thought, you know what, Caroline? That wasn't a book. That was an Instagram post. Be honest. <laughs> was it? <laughs> of course. But I read yeah. all three. No one reads a whole book. But yeah. this book. Yeah. It was actually The Garden of Emuna, which is a, a books that were written for Orthodox women. Mm. And I like reading everything. I feel like everyone is going to the same place and it's just like GPS. What accent do you want your directions in? Do you uh. need a lot of holidays? Do you need a lot of guilt? Do you need a lot of... What do you need to get to the exact same place that we're all going? To Whoa. have like a higher consciousness so we're, we're awake, right? I love this. So... What voice do you want on the GPS? Right. Who do you you know what? That just has... To me, that rings as divine truth. It's like... Yeah. It sounds like something... You'd have a vision quest and they'd be like, they're all going the same place. It's just like... What music do you want on the radio? Exactly. Yeah. What's good? Exactly. Yeah. What helps? What helps? So this book, of all the things, it, it was like a series of seven, and, and there was only one part at the end when I when it suggested that I wouldn't have female friends. I was like, okay, I'm not good with this part of the book. But otherwise, it's all just like if you're taking, extracting, even in the Bible, like whatever it is, you're, what's the big message? It's not literal. Like what's yeah. the what's yeah. the good part? Yeah. And it says, um, never stop being in awe of your children. Mm. And it, so resonated with me because I am, a, no matter you know, how mad or, I mean, obviously we're just training them to be good humans. That's yeah, our job. Yeah. And so when there are very few no's, if all the yeses get done, yeah. like I'm not, I'm, do you parent? One would ask a question if you were not the kind of host that shut that stuff down, but no, no, no. Are you like your mother and father or are you 180 degrees or 360 or whatever? I think that you want to do is. 180. Yeah, I think yeah. it's 180. 360 yeah. would be exactly like yeah. 180 would be opposite. 360 is exactly like, but you went on a little dance. <laughs> you did a little twirl, but you ended up the same place. <laughs> yeah. I think we're 180. And I think even my parents would agree with that. My mom says stuff like that. She's like, I was never that way with you. Yeah. You know, like I'll be doting or, or really locking into Leela. Really like, you I know, you know all what I that mean? attention and figuring it out. I well, they say the father's gaze, the like, you know what I mean. I like to look at. This is very sappy, I guess, but like, I just like when Leela catches me just looking at her and smiling. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's that's really like really funny. Because, that's the base coat. Because I will look at Ava and I will be driving. I'll be driving her to school and I'll say, "Honey, you're so pretty," and she'll say. <laughs> Can't wait. She'll go, thanks, mummy, because she likes words of affirmation. Yeah. As an Aries, I'm like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, ugh. Not your love no, lang? No, no, not my love no. lang. And, and then I'll say, I love your hair. And then she'll go, creep. <laughs> like, just turns. You know what I mean? Like, creep. yeah. I drove her to school and I said, and she goes like this, when we get to school, she was so serious. Do not roll down the window and stick your giant head out the window and scream that you love me. In front of the entire school again. And all I heard was, giant? My head is giant? <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? All goes, comedians have giant heads. Keep I going. had no idea yeah. until I dropped her at school. <laughs> and she got out of the car. And I didn't even know I'd done it. And I, I I had to maneuver it. I was like, very self-conscious of the head size at this point. And I'm like, I go, I love you. And then she was like a vampire in you know, Vampire Diaries. She was here and she just goes like this. Did you have a stroke? So seriously. she's got she goes, sass. She goes, seriously, what's wrong with you? I just told you. Yeah. And goes, your giant head. Yeah, what's goes, wrong leave. with your giant ears? <laughs> they can't hear me? You got that giant brain? Can't remember it? You got that giant mouth? Can't keep it shut? That is good stuff. Thanks for the eight tags. I'm glad I came. There you go. It's free. <laughs> that's, so, that's too cocky. It's free. You can have those. What time is it? We got to go. We do. Do you? Oh, gosh. Well, you have Can an you hour? Just text her and tell her. What do you, you... That I will be slightly late. You book something after this? My daughter. Well, I think she deserves a little come up and You know what I mean? Tell her your giant What's head's going to be name? a little late. Leela. Oh, you said Leela 55 times. How did I not... Did you? Did I? What? what where you is... only have an hour? We have to wrap this up? No, no, no. I'll just tell my daughter. I We, we were told it was 20 minutes, so I thought I was being a windbag. Look at my face. Look at all the information on my face. There's so much information on my face right now. I'm not leaving. No, no, you can. <laughs> there are some episodes that you're like, we banged it out. It's wonderful. So you can leave anytime. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to leave. I just want my daughter not to be upset with me. I don't think that's possible. Oh. JK. Valid. 
Valid. <laughs> no. I wanted to tell you this, but I want to also concede that I know that we're at the beginning and she's only five. Uh-huh. But <clears throat> there was a moment where Leela was playing with another little girl and the little girl did something wrong, whatever it was. And um, I, I forget. I think she was like... Objectively or subjectively? She actually did something It was like she broke something. something oh. or, you know, not a big wrong, but like something right. broke her. And she's like, oh no, I'm going to be in trouble. And Leela went, we don't do trouble in my house. And I was like, 180, baby. Yeah. 180. And I, I'm saying, like, I oh, know. Oh, we had a really bad one. Tell me. We didn't have time out. We had time in. She had to sit on my lap as I hugged her and I asked her, how could we have done that a different way? Well, you know that a 20 <laughs> second hug releases endorphins. There are all these things. It's incredible. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. She said, oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Tell her I'll text her dad. And, and it's. Him. It's, Lisa, it's the first text you've ever sent her, like a movie. You ever notice that in the movie when they text somebody, it's the first time they've ever texted? Because <laughs> it would be too confusing if you saw unrelated storylines. What do you mean you're going to be late? The tire's flat, but then it's a new date. Do you love Brian Darcy James? Who? Oh, Brian Darcy James. Yeah. I just didn't hear you. Oh. Love Brian Darcy James. Yeah, you're all up. On, see, I shot that on Redford. That's the oh. bowling show. And I Julie know. White. It was such a happy time. It turns out... And bowling is like such a massive... Love, besides the fact that it's funny, you know. I know. I really miss that show. It was a really... Katie Lowe's, who played my wife, was is still a dear friend of mine. Julie White is somewhere smoking a cigar with Bill Murray. I, I, we're not in touch anymore. <laughs> not not out of... I'm not, like, hurt by that, but, like, I stay in touch with Katie. Do you know Katie? Uh-uh. She, was, she is great. But I had such a crush on Brian Darcy James, always. Yeah, everybody was telling me what a big deal he was. To me, because of the context, he was right. just a producer on a show, but they right. were like, you don't understand. And I, oh. and I don't, I still don't understand, other okay. than I love him. Let your daughter listen to the soundtrack of Shrek. Who is he in Shrek? Shrek. He's, you mean On the Broadway. musical? Oh, okay. On Broadway. It's like, mm. no. no, he wasn't. Mike Myers? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Do you have a Mike Myers story? What's your Robin Williams story? You sat um, next to him in Whoopi. You were oh, I just, he above was, I, him on Hollywood Squares. He was just always, what was I going to say? He was so super sweet. The reason. That, he came on my talk show when, you know, at the beginning. People, to help. Yeah. Nobody goes on baby talk shows. They're all mean. And um, he came on and he was so sweet. And then he came on be- as a favor. They had Chris Bodie come on and they said, if you could let Chris come on, then Robin will come on. Oh. And then Chris ended up being my like musical guy on well, the show. Yeah. I know. Just an avalanche you know of help. What? We would do Hollywood Squares and everybody would be having their fancy Spago lunches and it would be so much fun. And Robin would be on the phone with people in the hospital. I can't. See, that's what Bobcat Goldthwait taught me. I do. <laughs> and he's like, really a Robin impression is he goes, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's that Robin. Oh, he was. It's I know. deep. I know. I remember the last time I saw him, though, he really looked so sad. All his light was not gone. You know what I mean? He just, well, that- he was, we were backstage at a Broadway show and he was like, hey, how are you? And I was like, normally it would be a big. Yeah. There's a real pain. I just did something with somebody who's brilliant, and I could see that they weren't feeling it that day. And yeah. it's just so sad. No matter, obviously, Robin had an, an illness, like a mental something. Right. I don't. I forget what it was called. But it just it, it bums me out. I like I like summertime, and when you see somebody in a winter, and they just can't find their own juice. Yeah. And it reminds me of how I sometimes feel that way. And you're just kind of like, I feel that. It's do you rough. get the dark side of being an Aries sometimes? I do. Yeah. 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 There's sunny Aries and dark Aries. There's some that are really like, yeah. But you're drawn to the sunny. We're also children, right? We're the first, that's why having a child is yeah. so fulfilling because you get to be a kid with them again. Yeah. Like I was down. I mean, playing twenty. We go like, to a I took party. Off ten I, years when Ava was born. Yeah. I was like, I'm oh, not wow. going to. A, I'm not going to a comedy club. I'm not going to do anything to miss this. Wow, you know? that's amazing. And now, and she still she doesn't even like it now when I leave. They don't like it when you leave. No, I know. Yeah. No, my daughter makes that pretty clear. Do you want to have another baby? I, I don't think so. No, just the one. Do you have the one? I just the one. How did that go? Well, my mine was she's a total miracle. My uh, uh my dad died and then the next month I got pregnant at 43. Oh no. Like it was a miracle that uh, they'd all told me I had no chance of getting pregnant. I'd been pregnant and had miscarriages but not. Wow. Yeah. So So your dad passes and right away you get pregnant. Yeah. Wow. And he was an OBGYN, so I was like, okay, I was like... Well, now he can't do it. Yeah, no, gross. He can't deliver the baby. Oh, God, I'm going to... 
be physically ill. I That was the plan, just for the discount. My father was an obstetrician gynecologist and a really big Star Wars fan, so he loved it if he called him OBG Wenobi. Oh my god. So I think I wrote that joke in nineteen ninety. Someone stole it and put it on a t shirt. I've done it on Conan twenty five times. I would do it every time. Stolen. Yeah. Brutal. Brutal. Uh it's so specific. Yeah, uh, C three Pete Holmes. <laughs> I didn't write it, but we made a T-shirt. We got a cease and desist, like they were using the force, Caroline. How did they know? Right away. Imme- if you have a C three Pete Holmes T-shirt, you're like one of the twelve. And then George Lucas personally shut it down with a lightsaber. <laughs> it was rough. Val has one. It makes C3 me happy. C three Pete Holmes C3 was Pete shut Holmes. down. It's just C three PO with my head. Well, come on. We can't do that, but you can make the prequels. I'm just kidding. I don't know. There's there's probably some worse Star Wars thing since then. There's too many. I want to do a TV show with you, and it's just our cameras. But then, yeah, yeah, mug, mug, yeah, full mug, and, mug and turn. A mug and turn. Nothing uh, wrong with nothing it. Nothing wrong with a mug and turn. That's where I went to college. Mug and turn. Was you? Did your daughter? Seeing as we're thinking about having just the one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Did your daughter? Well, I get a lot of intel. I get, I've done a lot Here's of surveys. The intel. I used to make people come over, always had friends over, always made them take their toys yeah. so that she would learn. And a sharing was like forced down her throat because she didn't have to. Yeah. I'm the youngest of three girls. And then in the summer, since she was born, we spend the summer with my entire family. See, this so is it. We've heard it, this. It's she's summer It's summer siblings. That's what we cousins. call them. Cousins. She's so tight with her cousins. That's what you need. We keep the play dates going. What's her birthday? She's, uh, oh God, September 23rd. Oh, she's a Libra like Ava. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. fine. Yeah, I mean, don't expect her to finish any sentences ever, but they're lovely. <laughs> There's a lot of good starting. Can I just say on the way down, we were blasting Katy Perry and Roar, and we were like, both mom and I were dancing and clapping, and, and we kiss, and I'm just like, <sighs> I just love that my daughter she's sees happiness. happiness. We played it so, I'm not bragging. I'm saying like, do this. If yeah. your parents do, it was so much more valuable than saying like, you got to live a happy life. It's like, let's turn up the radio and dance. It's yeah. Made, and it changes your state. It made us so happy and ready to see you. You know what I mean? Oh, God, yes. My, what, oh God, we listened to Katy Perry roar so many times. Me too. We played it twice in a no, row. No, I think she does. She doesn't have parents that are together, but she has happiness. I love that. And she has a lot. I mean, the number of times she's standing at the door and I'm dancing with a friend in the kitchen, and she goes, Mom, we have to go! Yeah, And I'm like, yeah. look, this is better than... You're right. I think having a funny parent's a gift. Sorry. Please tell her my dad is coming to get me, and she's not taking me. Oh, at what time? Um, I like that you weren't even affected by that. No, I'm, I'm internal internalizing. I just knew that she would do that. She said, Dad's going to get me, and you're not taking me. <laughs> well, you could you could have just said, Dad's going to get me. And you're not taking me. No, that's the part that she knows. Well, she said now. Okay. All right. Here we are. Say, <laughs> we blame a Lithuanian oaf. I'm going to tell you a cool story. 20 minutes? What? No. Katie was on those emails. Yeah. There's a whole spiel. Please allow two hours. Please note we record audio and video. Easy street parking. Please text me when you arrive. We, we got 20 minutes. 20... I want your reps to email me a list of podcasts that are 20 minutes. I know. I thought that was weird. I thought you had like three guests. It's not an episode of Bluey. It's a podcast. <laughs> you fuck. How, how could anyone have said that in, in more anger. of a foppy way? Yeah. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. It's not Bridgerton. It's a podcast. Unfurl it. Hey, you okay. seem like a lady who's seen a ghost. Oh my God. We grew up with ghosts. Yeah, Did tell I tell me. you that? No. Wow. <laughs> well, well, I guess I am intuitive, but you do have this lady's seen a ghost energy. Like you definitely, like if I had Are to just. Are sure I don't have this lady's been ghosted energy? <laughs> like, Maybe a little of that. I was ghosted You're by a man so in his 70s. Hopefully I thought he was so old. If you were missing. He, a, he died and became a ghost. <laughs> I went to all three. And one, two, and back. <laughs> You're so funny. But if I, my riff. Was if I went to the police, I'd say she has blonde hair. Uh, she looks like she's seen a ghost. They'd find you in 20 minutes or one po- podcast episode, one standard podcast episode. Did you see a man that came in that looked like a very well developed adult seven year old? <laughs> <laughs> what ghosts did you grow up? Which you know, ones? We, which ones? Well, oh, we, what? we grew up, um, Mr. What was his name? I, I, I you knew his ghost. name? Yeah. What? He wrote in the fog in the bathroom mirror? 
in script. Cursive? We called it script. Wow. Cursive is so American. Cursive. S- sorry, Canada. Go take one of your free prescription drugs and get over it. <laughs> I'm roasting you. Sorry. Sorry, Canada. Sorry if that was a bit rough. Why don't you go get some free therapy? <laughs> um, I am doing a TV series myself. And one of them, one of the episodes, a man gives me his card. And he says, the best fucking shrink in LA on it. And I can't, I don't know if it's a date or that yeah. I'm so insane that someone solicits it. <laughs> like... Oh, he gave, like, you're like, what, what is this? Yeah. You huh. can't tell date or not date. Um, yeah. It's, the only thing worse would be like a, like a personal fitness guru or yeah. something. And you're like. Unsolicited weight loss gift. Those people can't know if people know that they're flirting with them. Did that make sense? Uh-huh. Thank you. So what was this ghost you lived with? I'm trying to remember what his last <laughs> name was. Um, Economopolis? No. No. <laughs> Woo. Oh. I just want you to know that. Ava's going to be so mad at me right now. It's okay. Is there a way to save it? If you left right now, would you save it? No. You know, I'm going to tell you something, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but you're handsome. Oh, thank you. I thought you were going to say you look like John Ritter. That's what I said to you when I met you. That's right. I accosted you. you In Montreal. Remember. I was like, oh my! I loved it in the lobby yes. of the whatever that is. The whatever the, the Hyatt. Hyatt. I'm never doing another festival since you cleared since it that, all up. Well, that's a bit of a, that's an issue there too. And then you know what you do? Because you're never special. It's you're a right. festival orgy and then you make uh, young people go for broke. Like right. try to get their big break while everybody's watching all the other great comedians mm-hmm. in the world. It's like go watch John Mulaney, then watch a showcase of 10 unknowns. Like, what the fuck is this? Look at what they make us do. Who was the first person that you saw and you thought, I want to do that? Johnny Carson? Bill Cosby. Oh. Bill Cosby. That's how you have to say it. Bill Cosby. Because my parents took me to see him. And I was like, what? Now I know my parents are just sort of like... They're, I don't know how to say this without being mean, but they're just kind of like, what do people do? You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like they loved comedy or love Paul McCartney, but they're like, I, Paul McCartney is at the Fenway Park, and they just go. They're not crying or singing along, but they're like, we are human. Indeed. We are one of you. Like, that's what that's the currency they get from it. Are both of your parents giants? <laughs> no, my mom's a little lady. <laughs> oh, yeah, but... Ah. That's really a good my dad. But they took me to see Cosby, but it wasn't like they loved Cosby. I think it was like, this is what you're like. They're eating forks and chewing on flowers. <laughs> they're out of place. But we went and saw Cosby and I, it was just so powerful that they validated um, comedy. They legitimized it. Right. And we read the funnies. That's what we called the comics in the morning. And my mom loves jokes. My dad loves jokes. My parents still listen to albums of Billy Connolly. Really? Yeah, they would sit around and listen to albums, comedy albums. That's great. You know what's crazy? So this is Steve Martin. There's a Steve Martin album framed yeah, on the There's wall. a Steve Martin album over there. Okay. So, yeah, he was probably my first big giant influence. I had I was with my best friend Amanda. We were staying alone for the weekend and we were given eighty dollars to take care of ourselves for the weekend in Stowe, Vermont. And we went and bought cone heads and arrows through our head with all of the money. And then we took our picture three ch- on a tripod and peed in our pants. We were laughing so hard. We thought that was the greatest. You so, watched them. Huh? You went to the show. Yeah. You didn't blow your, your ticket no, no, money no, no, on no. the props. We didn't watch them. No, we, no, that's it. Props. Yeah. No, we bought props. Instead of going to the show. We, we were in Stowe, Vermont. It wasn't oh, live I'm from sorry. New York. It's Stowe, Vermont. That's not what the S is for. Anyway. <laughs> Parts of that just slipped through me. I just Stowe Night know. Live, everybody. <laughs> Get your maple syrup ready and vote conservative. I don't know. I don't know. Are you kidding? Vermont? Yeah, I know. I, Bernie? I blew it. You blew it. I blew the riff. Vote independent. And I'm vote like, independent. Do it again. Yeah. Get your maple syrup ready and vote independent and get ready to cross country ski, not for exercise, just to go to the store. <laughs> Throw away all of your deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> go on. So you love C. Martin. C. Martin was huge for me too. You're You're helping me remember that in church, they played the Bill Cosby Noah from um, one of the albums. They played the Noah routine. Oh. And I was just like, 
Oh my God. It's like. I opened for him. You did? At the Ford, like every employee party. It was in Las Vegas. So as many employees that there are at Ford. For the Ford feel, Motor Company. I feel like it was 40,000 people. 40? Yeah. Is it not? I just said 40, like Ford. Oh, oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. 40. Okay, I'm sorry. Dentist who's tooth hurty. Tooth hurty. <laughs> Go on. Um, and I've never seen anybody control an audience like 40,000 people. Where, wow. where I was like, what do you think of me? What do you think of me? What do yeah. you think? Like exhausting and... yeah. Being super react, and he, he really was. It's was a, he it's, nice to you? Um, yeah, it was a very brief interaction. Hello. <laughs> just remember, it's just one big audience, Caroline. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be disappointed in about twenty years. <laughs> he knows. Enjoy me now. Okay, do you want to hear my Steve Martin story? Yes. I love Steve Martin. Love. So, and and this, if, if he doesn't understand, like if he comes to, if he's a big one of your listeners, yep. I don't know, if he's one of the four that, and he. <laughs> he's writing a play on a typewriter with this in the background. This is really distracting. This isn't good work music. I was at the HBO um, Comedy Festival. Aspen. Aspen, many years ago, before yeah. your time. It ended right when I was about to do those things. I'm class of 89. What are you? What do you mean? Like That's when I started. 2001, I would say. Are you really? Yeah. You're that much of a baby? Wow. Yeah. One of those babies. But that means yeah. I've been doing it 23 years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's still a baby. So my comedy can drink. It can't yet rent a car. <laughs> Mine is a broken hip. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then a sip to accent. Mm-hmm. So you're Steve Martin. So you're in Aspen. <laughs> and um, I go up to Steve Martin because the, we couldn't, because of the weather, we couldn't fly out of Aspen. The HBO jet, which they brought us all on. And so I go up to Steve Martin, who I've literally loved and adored my whole life. And I say, um, I just wanted to tell you, because I knew we were on the same flight. I said, um, the flight got canceled. So we're going to have to go. They're going to drive us to Rifle. And he goes, oh, oh, thanks. He goes, oh, do you work for the airline? And I was like, yeah, I just couldn't. I was like, no. And then I went up to him and I told him, I said, we're actually going to take, there's a bus and they're going to take us to Rifle. And then this was within an hour. He said, oh, oh, oh do you work for the bus company? I was like, eh, what's wrong? What? No. So then we're sitting on the bus and I guess, I don't know, I was invisible at the time. And then he couldn't really see me. And then I'm sitting in a single seat. And Martin Short and his then lovely wife are sitting here at like a little table. And Steve and a friend. But we're this close. We're this close. It's a tiny, it's a yeah. private jet. Yeah. And it's like they'd gone like. And I'm like. <laughs> and that they're just laughing killed me a little and, bit. Being like so hysterical. at one point, a shrimp goes flying and it bounces on the it's invisible. Wall. <laughs> no, it can't even penetrate. No, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the plexiglass bent out, and <laughs> he uh, <laughs> that reminds me when I was a cater waiter, that was the most disgusting thing. People would always go like this they double dip the shrimp, which was so repulsive, they would take the shrimp, put it in the sauce. Blah, 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 blah put it in again and then and then suck it and then with that little tail they would always go can i give you this and i go yes i'm making a necklace thank you and they always went you are and i go does anyone realize i'm being do you work for the bus company (laughs) okay so they're on the plane ignore me never acknowledge me in any way no i'm literally like this and i'm like like don't even look i'm like staring straight ahead (laughs) we get to the tarmac which is private and I see a sign for Steve Martin and I stupid and relentless. And I just said to him, I go, I go, Oh, your, your um, limousine is over there. And he goes, Oh, Oh, do you work for the limousine company? And I'm like, are you fucking with me or what? But he wasn't. This is what I've wanted to know this whole time. It wasn't a no, bit. No, no. Okay. Wait. So how many years go by? Eight to 10, eight to 10 years go by. And I, 
my no, it's not that long. It's like two thousand and whenever Bowfinger came out. Bowflex. Bowfinger, hilarious movie that he's in. Yeah, and and with Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Yeah, hilarious. Yeah. So, I the person there's a dog in Bowfinger who's hilarious, and that animal trainer Kathy Pittman trained the cats and all the animals on Sabrina. So she said, "Would you walk the dog through the press line for Bowfinger?" And I'm so freaking Canadian. I said yes. <laughs> now I don't know if you've ever had this horrible experience where I can't remember what the dog's name is. Like let's say Ginger. Have you ever have you ever done this to your wife? Where they're like you're they're like Pete and what's your wife's name? Val. Pete and Val. Pete and Val. Just Pete. Just Pete. as if you're supposed to turn yeah. to your wife. Just and go, Pete. Yeah. Shove. You know just. Yeah. And then yeah, and then you're like, just me. It's so rude. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So rude. Anyway. And it's so, so hard on my arms pushing her that I know. hard. You don't get enough propulsion. It's hard to get a good yeah. heave when she's that close to me. But I, what my trick is, I bend you my run. knees and I get low on her to give her a little hop I as think, I push her out of the shot. I love you. <laughs> I, that was it. When I have to look back at the memory book, that's when, he, that's when I fell in love with him. Right then and there. The worst part is just pushing her far enough. <laughs> and fast enough. <laughs> now everyone just <laughs> okay so we go to this premiere i don't know why i agree to take the dog all right it's because it was right before i was gonna do the talk show and i was like okay it's press so i'm walking ginger through the press line if this and is and going... i hear just ginger and i'm like oh my god so i'm literally because she's on a leash and i'm extending like out like this like i can't drop the leash and i'm like okay We'll Photoshop the hag's <laughs> arm out. I'm right here. That that repugnant hand won't be in the shot, I assure you. So. The witch talons must be AI'd out. Someone puts a napkin over your hand. There. <laughs> okay. Just ginger. Steve Martin. I gotta look up that dog's name. Steve Martin comes up to me. And I'm like, and he goes, are you the dog trainer? That dog was so well behaved. And I'm like, I go, no, I'm not the dog trainer. This is like, I really, I couldn't believe it. The he, worst place that you can sit in a premiere and they talk about it in Bowfinger is the very front row. If they put you in the front row and they're all in the front row in Bowfinger at the premiere of their movie. Yes. No, the worst place to sit is in the front row next to a dog. That's where I sat. Next to a dog in the front row of the Bowfinger premiere after Steve Martin asked me if I was the dog trainer. Okay. Cut to Wait, no. George Carlin's funeral. And Kostaki and I walk in and it's Louis is doing the one of the eulogies and it's so The U E C K? Eulogy C K. Oh God, it's I like tried. looking in a mirror. It's awful. And <laughs> he's doing the eulogy, CK. It was worth stepping oh, out. It was perfect. Okay, thank you. You Louis G C K. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's Ben Stiller and his wife Christine. I think Louis, and then I think Alec Ball. No, nope, Alec wasn't there. And I then wasn't it was there. Steve Martin and his wife. And Kostaki says, "I I go first of all." You know he's going to ask me if I'm a pallbearer, so I can't, I can't even go near him. So I. Did you drive the hearse? <laughs> Are you with the hearse company? <laughs> Kostaki says, introduce me to Steve Martin because I say hi to Bruce. Bruce, I say hi to Ben, ben Stiller and his wife and whoever they're. I know them, and then I, and I'm like, oh god. He goes, can you please introduce me? Introduce me to Steve Martin. I go. I am not talking to Steve Martin. Are you insane? He never, ever, ever. He thinks I'm like the man with a hundred jobs. Yes. No. Yes. So. Oh, it's that dog go, trainer exactly. pilot. <laughs> bus lady. Oh, the bus pilot. He remembers, but he can't remember, but he does remember everything that he remembered wrong. Oh, it's the woman from the bus company and the plane company and the dog trainer. I haven't seen you since 1998 at the Bowfinger premiere. <laughs> it was right after he and Alec had hosted the Oscars, right? So he's sitting uh, in front of me and he turns around. Now you're me. And he turns around and he goes, 
Caroline, hi, how are you? And I go like this. Like, and he, he goes like this. Steve, Steve Martin. And I go, you look so familiar, but I cannot place you. It's driving me crazy. And he goes, I go, I just saw you on something with my really good friend, Alec Baldwin. What was it? He goes, well, we did the Oscars. I go, that's it. You were the person with Alec at the Oscars. And, and my boyfriend's like this. I've never done anything like this in my entire life. Okay. The rest of the entire funeral, Steve Martin couldn't stop talking to me. You did it. You negged him. I negged him. You negged Steve Martin. Okay. And it worked. Like at one point, um, Kelly Carlin was saying, well, as my father knew, all comedians are crazy. And uh, Steve turned around and looked at me and goes, we're not crazy. I I mean, there were other times that I'd met him too. And he still, I just didn't register. Like he was connecting with me. And I was like, this is weird. So 20 cut to 20 years later. And, and I love Steve Martin. I really do. I, I, he's amazing. Uh, my friend, I was, we both collect Martin Mull paintings. Back to your teacup problem. Yes. Oh, oh, it's all. It's all in the mix. Yeah. Go on. Martin Mull. People who collect are just people who have a little bit more money than hoarders, but it's the same gene. Right. So. Uh, That's a Robin Williams joke. It is? Co- it, it reminds me of Robin. Oh. He goes, uh, cocaine is a way of God telling you, you have too much money. Isn't that good? I was like, it's not the same joke, but yeah. <laughs> it's, for, it's like collecting is a way of God yes. saying you have too much money. Yeah. It's not even similar, but welcome to my brain. There it was, just for a whisper. In 1989 at Stand Up New York, that's when I first saw Robin Williams. He came on stage and he was talking about how one day we'll be, pay- we'll be paying for water and how ridiculous that is. And then he went downstairs and he left the bathroom, but his fly was down. And I said, your, your fly is down. Like that. I was intimidated. And he goes, thanks, man. And I was like, he thinks I'm a man. (laughs) (laughs) Only a man would know the humiliation of a down Z. X, Y, Z. Examine your zipper. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my good man. I would like one of you in my age, please. (laughs) Wow. You've done it. You write what I'm going for every episode. I did it. We did it. Can Um, I get you in a... (laughs) Okay, so Steve Martin... I, my friend is friends with him and I said, um, Steve, it's the largest collector of Martin Mull paintings and also the largest, he has, he has cataloged every American artist that there is, every single one. And he has the largest collection of Aboriginal art, which is so beautiful. He's, he's really very knowledgeable about art. Yeah. So I said, do you think I could get a hold of him? I want to ask him about this Martin Mull painting because it's really beautiful and I wanted to... Anyway, I wanted to know about it. Mm. And so he said, sure. And so he emailed me and um, and then he said, do you want to get on the phone? And then he said, uh, Caroline, I'm not sure that we've ever met, but I'm a big fan of your work. And I said, I think we've met. Yeah, I think we've met. But he's so gracious and kind to me and helps me with art now. And I'm not saying, it's just, it was funny that there were so many times. You need to neg him again. That man needs a fresh negging. When he comes why, over, why do humans do that? Why? Why? Do, oh, but it is specifically comedian too. Like I get real. If I think I've offended somebody, yeah, I'll be. I, I used to be worse. Yeah. Like Mark Maron, so, sort of famously, doesn't like me, and I used to go real hard to try and get him to like me. I don't do it anymore. Now I walk into the green room at the comedy store if he's on the bill, and I have five roast jokes in my back pocket. I'm ready. And I haven't had to use them because he's he's mellowed a little bit. I don't like that he famously doesn't like you. Me neither. What? Why? What am I doing? What have you ever done? Well, to last him? time I saw him, I was like, "Mark, I'm not 28 anymore." I said that to him, and that was a nice little moment. It was like facing Freddy Krueger. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like I'm not afraid of you. Right. I'm not a kid anymore. I know who you're making fun of, but that guy's gone. He's gone. And it, you know that's my wound. See me. See yeah. me today. If you're gonna make fun of me, at least make fun of me for how I am today. Right. Not the kid you knew. I'm pretty sure that, that would be rooted in jealousy. What I said? No, what he's uh, his feelings towards you would be jealousy. My family is always like that. I, but I, I'm kind of like that too. I go like, there might be some jealousy there. No, you know, there might be some jealousy there. Yeah. Yeah. That's not nice. I don't like that he's not nice to you. Thank you. I well, I have a new ally. No. What if I email you in six years? I don't know if we've ever met. <laughs> but wouldn't that be sad? Well, if I don't remember things in six years, very sad. 
Very I sad. wouldn't want to meet Steve Martin because he means so much to me. In fact, his child went to a camp, a summer camp that Leela also went to. And we didn't, I didn't say anything to him because I was like, it's too, I've realized a what long mean, time. You, you met him? I walked behind him. But all we remember was his kid said something to him and Steve went, pardon? And I was like, that is precious to a child. Pardon me? But he wasn't saying like, I beg your pardon. Like a, right. he was just saying pardon. Because what is what, you know, apes You know what I say. think about him? He's a total artist. Yeah. Full package. Full pack. Well, I don't know if he's a full pack, but I'm, I mean, no. He has medium dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's putting an arrow on his head if he's got a schlong, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're going up there being like, look at this, look at this. Don't look down there. Look at this. Medium dick energy. <laughs> I'm just doing Robin I was, like, I was like, but he sounds like Robin. <laughs> Robin? No, I'm not going to talk about Robin's wiener. Although, I don't you hate when people do this with dead people? They go, but he would have loved it. And- <laughs> He would. You say something horrible, and you go, "That's exactly the kind of joke he would have loved." And okay. it's like, "No, he hated you." <laughs> he would have hated you and that yeah. joke. In death, he still thinks you're mediocre. <laughs> Fun. This episode is brought to us by our friends at Living Libations. For years, our household has been a Living Libations household. What does that mean? We got rid of all of the random chemical nightmares in our skin care, in our body care, mouth care, wash, whatever you need. If you're putting on moisturizer, if you're putting on deodorant, if you're putting on anything for your body, look at those ingredients and ask yourself, do I feel good about any of this? Baby care, sunblock, well, enter Living Libations. They are here to help. We're talking about incredibly high-end, effective, badass products that work incredibly well and have natural ingredients that you can read and pronounce and feel good about. Because be honest, what you put on your body ends up in your body. So if you're careful about what you eat, I try to be careful about what I eat. Now we are also careful about what we put on our body because it ends up in our body. We use their uh, best skin ever moisturizer every single day. In fact, I just put it on. Uh, We use their baby products. We use their Love the Sun sunblock, which is an actually natural sunblock. Living Libations is a great way to support the show. You don't have to get something big. They have little things. They have big things. But if you want to take one product and replace it slowly in your medicine cabinet, better your life, and support the show, Living Libations has got you covered. Stop getting the random blue goose that they sell at 7-Eleven. You shouldn't be shaving with that. Get their Zen Shave Cream. I love their Zen Shave Cream. Okay, 15% off. Go to livinglibations.com slash weird. That's 15% off at livinglibations.com slash weird. We're also brought to us by our friends at First Person. I'm super excited to tell you about Golden Hour. It is a blend of organic mushrooms as well as a highly curated blend of nutraceuticals that boosts your oxytocin. Golden Hour is a lifesaver. It is absolutely a must-have for both me and Val. Val just went through a tough weekend. She brought a ton of Golden Hour with her, and she said it carried her through. You take it within about 15 minutes. You just feel a sense of joy, connection, and relaxed presence. I noticed the difference the first time I took it, and the effect has built over time. I stack all three of the first-person supplements. Uh, Golden Hour is my favorite. My second favorite is Sunbeam, which supports the body's natural production of dopamine. So Golden Hour boosts oxytocin, that feel-good hormone. Dopamine is the motivating hormone. So we're getting that into our body to get work done. If I'm sitting down to rip through some emails, I take some Sunbeam for 15 minutes beforehand. And every night before bed, I take Moonlight, which helps me sleep by activating uh, the GABA neurotransmitter to relax the central nervous system. Check out their website. It's grain-free, it's organic, it's nutraceuticals. It is a game changer. Start supporting your brain health and your cognition with First Person. Get 20% off your first order by going to getfirstperson.com and use code WEIRD. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All right, everybody. Back to Caroline. Tell me about the ghosts. Then we'll go. No, I'm going to tell you. Oh, I was going to look for something. Um, oh. I can't remember his name. Mr. Crawford, Mr. He, no, he, uh, it was a, um, I saw him at the foot of my bed. I was, he, he touched my toe. 
I was seven. I saw a full ghost. He touched your toe. Yeah. When you were seven. Yeah. I think it's sort of like he was like, I want to scare you, but I don't want to scare you that badly. Let's not. I'm going to touch the toe. And then I was like. And you felt it? Yeah, I saw it. But I did saw you a feel? full person. I saw a ghost in in um, Italy. They were all over the place at this haunted house. That we, it was the most ridiculous house. It's probably that I a rented. family of them. They're very close families. We used to joke. Oh, <laughs> we, you're gonna haunt this house with me or what? You'll never haunt with me anymore. That's the mother. You say you'll haunt with me. You're never here. Live with me. Kiss me on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're not even dead. <laughs> what am I alive to you? Am I out there going grocery shopping? No. Now it's Seinfeld. <laughs> so Italy was lousy with ghosts? No, we, we rented this house. It was from like the 1700s and we get to this house and the vibe was so ghosty. And I swear, like every time I start turn a person, I'm like, oh, there's a ghost. Oh, there's a ghost. And then Wait, we look. seeing a full ghost. Yeah, full ghost. You and mean, then, I, I need one clarification. When you say it's a ghost, do yeah. you think it might be a person or you're just like, that's clearly a No, they a were ghost. totally dressed in like 1700 clothing. It's not see through. No. Sorry yeah. to be silly, but are no, they, they a little like, see through? Yeah, no, it was. It was like it was like very faint animation, but they were real. I saw them. Yeah, have you never seen one? Gosh, you've totally faked me out like it was normal. But I've never seen a ghost. No, except everybody knows this because I ask people about ghosts. Not even only... of your sex life, but am I right? <laughs> am I right? A lot of moaning and chains in my sex life. That's ghosty. Um, no, my the ghost of my cat. Every time I don't oh. sleep in my old bedroom anymore, but when I used to, when I go home to see my mother, I'd sleep in my old bed, and my cat consistently every morning jumps on the bed oh. and curls up by me, and I, I I like clockwork, and I always wake up before it happens, and I'm like I'm wide awake. If I just lay here, Clem will jump on the bed, and he does, and he curls up, and I feel it, and I look, and there's nothing there, and it's. I don't know. I don't want to say there's that kind of person, but I'm not really that kind of person. Like that's not sort of stuff happening all the time. Right. It just happens there. Yeah. Okay, you want to hear my good ghost story? Yeah. It's not really a ghost. Okay. Can't wait. So when my mom died, broke my heart. Like I literally cried for two years straight. Mm. And my daughter would like, she'd hear me crying and she'd be like, it's okay, mommy. Nana's here. Nana's here. It's okay. Like she was so comforting. Mm. And she, my mother, when I was in college, I had to take theater arts, which is, ridiculous it's basically like if you're not going to make it as an actress maybe you can be a prop person which i would never be able to do we mm. had to build a clock people built real working clocks i had like a camembert or a brie pin cheese pinwheel which i painted 10 to 2 like a timex commercial from the 70s and i did it on like the day before and i and my mother always thought that was so hilarious i think i got like i passed by one point and she <laughs> you know she was like oh tell me darling about when you almost failed theater crafts i love that story <laughs> so 10 to 2 was like our complete joke. We just thought, she just thought that was the funniest thing in the yes. world. Yes. It only went 10 to 2. Well, at that, in the 70s, every Timex commercial was when they advertised the watches, it was at 10 to 2. Oh, always. 10 that minutes was, to 2 o'clock. Yeah. That was always the time on the watch. Oh. Right. So my mom thought it was totally hilarious. Yeah. So my mom, um, I wore my mom's watch every day after she died. And my daughter and I went on a vacation. It was the most boring adult place in the entire world. But it was funny because it was so posh. Ava goes, you'd think they could have like one water slide, mommy. <laughs> and at that particular um, hotel, I said, Ava, oh my God, you have to look right there. That is one of the most famous rock musicians in the entire world. And his wife was one of the most beautiful supermodels you've ever seen. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. She goes, mommy, I can't. The very old couple is blocking them. I go, no, they are the very old couple. That's who they are. It's Keith Richards and Patty Hanson. That's who we're at this thing. Okay. So this place was weird and posh. And I took off my watch at that place and I lost it. I took it off to go swimming. Mm. And it was my mom's watch. I was totally devastated. Okay. So a year goes by and Ava is with her grandmother at Easter. And she goes, mommy, I had a, I had a dream about Nana last night. She came to me in the dream. She came to me in my dream. She goes, she told me to look in the suitcase. And I was like, oh, like my daughter's totally connected. We grew up all connect. Like wow. it was all normal. Anyway, she goes, and mommy, I found Nana's watch. It was in the suitcase. It was a year later. She brings it back to me and the watch says 10 to 2. Shut everyone's fucking mouth. 
twice. Shut it and then shut it again. I need it shut and then I need a photograph to prove that it's shut. And by the way, at that time, I was like, I'm not going to be a comedian anymore. I'm going to be an auctioneer. That's what I'm, I'm good at that. I don't want to do this anymore. And my mother was like, dumbass, you're really funny. That's what you're meant to do. And that's what she told me. Wow. What in real life, in, in life, I mean, in living time, she told you that? No. No, in, but with the message. Yeah. I, I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> How wild, but you lost it at the pool. Yeah, I, that's what it, I thought. I yeah. thought I lost it at the pool. I obviously didn't. I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy. Have you ever almost died? On stage? <laughs> you could tell a good bomb. All right, this is my favorite show busy story. Love it. I opened for Don Rickles. It was me, Alonzo, what and Adam like, Hills. It was me, a Jew, and a fat broad. <laughs> like you have to say it in his terms. It's me, a Native American. We all walked into the club. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, Alonzo and Adam Hills and I. And the only reason they had us open was because it was hard for him at that point to do Two hours. He just did one hour and he was sitting at the time because he'd had the horrible flesh eating disease that he got. I didn't know that. Yeah. Anyway, I loved Don Rickles. Mm. So after the first night, I was literally sitting at his feet like, tell me every story that's ever happened to you. Oh. Anything I just want to learn. I just want to hear. I just talk about anything. And then. Did um, he love it? Oh, he was so sweet. I loved him. And I know his daughter, Mindy. He was always like, help Mindy. So <laughs> and he, on the second show, <laughs> the second night. I did the show, and of course, I come into his room after the show, and he sees me out of the corner of his eye, and he goes, the girl was weak! <laughs> the girl was weak. He goes, the girl was weak. Oh, Blondie, come in. I didn't see you. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, that was so good. That is excellent. Mm -hmm. Truly excellent. Mm -hmm. But you've never almost died, like physically? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When? Um, when I was 22, I went hiking with my best friend in Tucson, and we got lost in the desert for 29 hours. Shut. And I, um, and we were literally on the way there singing a three-hour tour, you know, and we, and, and I, had, I had actually, believe it or not, at 22, I had done a triathlon. I was in, like, super killer shape. We were hiking, and all of a sudden... It, and everybody thought we'd already gone to San Diego, so nobody was looking for us. Pre-phones. Cell phones. <laughs> Hello, anyone there at all? No uh, one was looking for you. <laughs> no one is looking for you. Nobody. Hello. Look Hello. to the coyotes for help. Yeah. That's who can help. So we are, all of a sudden, everything looks identical in the, in the desert. It's like one hill looks like the next. All the canyons look alike. So, and it's all cactus. And all of a sudden, it's dark. And cold, probably. And all the animals are coming out to go to the water because we're down by a stream. We almost jumped off that down into um, a waterfall. We almost thought, well, we can make it. We would have been killed immediately. So all of a sudden, there's like coyotes, there's wolves, there's every kind of animal. And we scale this like rock mountain. And I back kick literally a boulder into my best friend's chest, like right here. She still has like a scar here. And I was like, uh -uh. then I don't have my glasses on. I have one entire foot off a cliff and she grabs me. I have one foot off. When that foot goes off, that shoe fell off because it was so ridiculous. I walked the last 16 miles with one shoe. And I literally had like a full cactus on me. No. Full. I. Full on stepped in a cactus. Who came up with this day? A writer's room? I know. It's ridiculous. And I remember we were both sitting there. We were sharing like a sweatshirt and it was like freezing cold at night. And all of a sudden this like ringtail raccoon that was like eyes like this. It was like this, like right in our face. like, And then one of those necks that just goes like. And we were both like. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And Pam, who has like no violent tendencies, she's like, hand me the rock. I go, you're going to kill us? Oh my God, she goes, I'm going to kill it. I'm like, why do you have to kill it? It's just like staring at us. She's like, I'm going to kill it. Like, full on. <laughs> so, 
Anyway, it takes off. Obviously, speaks English. Heard that we were going to kill it. It's like, boom, <laughs> gone in one second. Two seconds later, the mother is like this big, eyes like this. And we're like, okay, Pam, now the whole family's alerted. All these, like, cr- it was insane. And we're like hugging each other. And she goes, I go, I wonder, I wonder if God really is real. I go, what do you think about it? She goes, I wonder if I'm ever going to have sex again. I'm like, we're in a weird, awkward position. We're like, push me, pull you in this Canabunk Port sweatshirt and <laughs> animals are circling us. And then, <laughs> oh, so ridiculous. So then the sun comes up and I'm literally limping because I've got a cactus on my foot. And and we, like, the cactus were like this. We just, like, throw our body through the cactus. We were covered in cactus. It took, like, days to get them all out. No. And, we, and I'm so Canadian. We meet this woman. And Pam's like, I'm going to kill you. I can't believe we're going to die like this. We're like, at this point, we've turned. And we see this woman. I'll never forget. She was, like, walking on. Holding a daisy, like she loves me, he loves me not. He lo-. And she was in her forties, and she had braces. I'll never forget it. She just looked like a crazy, like I don't know what, like person just appeared. And I go, and we were like, and we were like, hi, do you have any water? <laughs> like we were so polite. We we're gonna. She's like, like we've um, we've been in the desert for a long time. Can we have some water. <laughs> And then she goes, oh my god, oh my god, let me help you. I go, we don't know. We're disoriented. We don't how to get back. And she goes, it's just this way. I go, how far is it? She goes, 10 miles. So we walked another 10 miles like that. Yeah. Anyway, I think that was the closest to death. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been such a humiliating obituary. Killed by a giant eyed, raby ridden something. Nobody even knows. Oh, my God. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. One, don't, don't plug what I'm going to do. Yeah. Comedy <laughs> fantasy camp. <laughs> comedy fantasy camp. Yeah. Dot com. I'm not saying dot com, Lisa. I'm not saying it. I'm just kidding. What has been so far the happiest phase of life? For me? Yeah. Uh, not to be can, but having Leela absolutely hands yeah. down for sure. It, now that she's five, I'm just starting to get back into my life, kind of like engaging yeah. with it more. Yeah. Because she is old enough that I feel like that's valuable too for her to see that her dad yeah. is out there and doing stuff and she comes along. And, and that's why I was saying to you, I go, honey, I want you to love something that yeah. you do in life so much yeah. that you want to do it just like I well, do. Well, it's all just modeling. I'm like, this is what it's this is what it looks like to be in love. This is what it looks like to love what you do. This right. is what it looks like to be caring. This is what it looks like to listen. That's the most important thing is I'm like, I'm showing you what it's like to be with an abundant, generous person with his time, with his attention. So you won't settle for the for the, Who's the alcoholic loser. For the cheap stuff. That's I didn't mean you. No, that could be that. That's like the best gift in the world. I mean, I hope my mom was a single mother, and my, you know, yeah. I was predestined. I was like, no, I, I, I yeah, you absolutely so model funny. what you see. But what a gift you are. You know what I mean? Our wounds oh, start. You know what I mean? But you are. What a gift. It's alchemy. All of this. I, I'm not. We didn't really get into pain, but if there was, it, you know, to turn it into something and share it. So that's what I was going to say. We have two topics left. Okay. One is the meaning of life. Okay. And we have 30 minutes or right. 20, 25 minutes. I only need four. Really? No. <laughs> Hilarious. That's like Don Riggles. I can do it in four. I can do it in four. The girl was weak. Okay. <gasps> oh, I have a really good story. Tell me. Uh, it's a good meaning of life story. Anyway, go on. What meaning of life and what's the other question? Well, the other one I don't want Just wanna... a simple math problem? Yeah. <laughs> George has nine apples. And he left Chicago on a train going 15 miles per hour. I still have anxiety about this math problem that they were like, there's a bathtub and it's full ah! and it's draining, but ah! the faucet is on. At oh! what point will it be oh! At what point filled? And I'm will like, Pete the plumber show up for the third time that week? And I go, <laughs> yes, eat shit is the answer. You know what? I'll tell my daughter, eat shit is the correct answer to that math problem. Why? I, this is one of my first bits before I ever did stand up. I never performed. I go, I don't like math. I don't need problems. Math problems? I have enough problems. What kind of sociopath is thinking up problems for me to solve? It's not bad. That's really funny. It's not bad. It's but that's how I felt as a kid. You're giving me your problems? <laughs> Fuck that off. That is really funny. I feel like it's funny for us. I don't know if an audience would agree, but it's podcast funny. <laughs> it works here. So meaning of life story. And then the other topic I'll just tell you is I think it would be, I, I just, look, you're a lady, you're a lady, 
Lady, and you came you're up in- not in shining armor, <laughs> and I love you. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you're unique, in, and you came up in stand-up in a time, you know? That's the whole thing. So I'd love to talk about your advice for comics. I'm sure a lot of comics are listening. So we have the meaning of life, and we have advice, but we can do that in either, either order. I just feel like you had a very, you, like I would watch the documentary of you coming up, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I'd like a little taste of it. Not just from the female perspective, but your perspective. New York City, a sweet Canadian. Oh, let me tell you, I have no clue. The hockey puck you slid from Manitoba Uh, on. Oh, this was free. The government gave me a cheese sandwich and a big push. (laughs) I had no idea coming to New York. I literally had no idea. One, I'd never heard the term wasp. Wasp. I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. So they were, uh, but you then were, it, are, as my mother did say to me once, she goes, no, darling, you're a saucy sailor on stage, but the minute you get off, you're just a prissy little wasp. I'm like, correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great. I auditioned for Meatballs 3 because there was so much more of the story to tell that didn't get finished in one and two, just like The Godfather. And <laughs> We need to cinch this up. Yeah. We the need- Meatballs legacy. Okay, here's another thing. So, Patrick Dempsey yes. was the star of Meatballs 3 with Sally Kellerman. And it was it was filmed in Lake St. Louis. And my and I and my mother told everyone, Care was offered the part of the topless water skier. But sadly, she can't water ski. Okay. <laughs> and someone's like, spoiler. <laughs> we haven't seen it. There's a topless water skier. That really answers a lot of the questions for Meatballs 2. You really were offered the part of topless water skier? Yes. My mother was like funnier than I could ever, ever, ever aspire to be. She's just hilarious. I remember I love it. when I was studying Buddhism, one of my many spiritual journeys, and she's, we thought she was doing like government testing for asbestos melting. And there was always being something set on fire in the kitchen. We were like, did, they, did you do the research? Does it work? Because the cuisine here is all over the stove now. It just always looked like weird, bad plastic art. And... <laughs> She spilt, and she would if you if you did something negative. She never wanted to be pointed out. Like I remember going to her house, and she, I I was like this, like after two seconds, I'm like, Mom, my God, I've, I've got like four hundred bites. Does the dog have fleas? And she's like, Why do you have to be negative? Why can't you focus on the positive? <laughs> I'm like as you're infested, my legs are bleeding, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, so she she spilled for some reason. We had like the largest container of honey, and she spilt it on the ground, and it was like it looked like it had been like. Amber, you know, like like a prehistoric exactly. Like there's a dinosaur egg in it. It was like <laughs> thick and glossy and all over the kitchen. And there were ants from everywhere. It was like Mecca for ants. They were like, You must come, there's honey for all of us. Like everywhere. Ants coming down here and just thousands of ants. And <laughs> and at the time, one of the big things, the tenets of Buddhism is you cannot kill a sentient being or sentient, whatever. Anyway, so I was literally in the kitchen, I was like this. I was like walking like like there was there, I, I was like this. I was like, not to kill an ant, you know. And I was like, oh my god, oh my god. And my mother's like, what are you doing? And I said, I don't want to kill an ant. They're sentient beings. And she said, oh, for God's sake, use my shoe. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> she was like really, really funny. And oh what's so god. hilarious is I have ants in my bathtub now. Yes. In in California. And you won't wipe them out? Are you kidding? I literally set the temperature at like 130 and shot them down like a like I was doing Call of Duty. And I and I thought, what has happened to me? That I is met, so I'm just like, Shh, I'm funny. Burning. I might as well have gotten geometry sets in the light and like set the ants on fire. <laughs> um, okay, anyway, so I go to Meatballs 3. And to I, audition. I auditioned the first time and the guy was disgusting that I was auditioning for. He was literally like this the whole time. He goes, he was just swearing and being repulsive. And then he's like, yeah, go, go. Yeah. And then he's on the phone. I don't give a fuck what they're doing. Blah, blah, blah. And talking. So I do. He's the on ad- a call while you're auditioning. Yeah, and I'm, I audition, right? I do the audition. My friend was the associate casting person, right? So I get a call back and I can see the notes. Right. This is so pre me too, but it was disgusting. So he's written by every woman's name. Great tits, great ass. Okay, tits, great ass. Enormous ass, good tit. Like, it's just literally tits, ass, tits, ass. Like, not the most sexualizing comments. (sighs) And then I 
of course I see my name and it just says funny, really funny. Everybody else tits and ass. I was 22. I could have gotten mentioned. Um, <laughs> like, could I be objectified, please? Yeah, can I be objectified? It would have, I'm at yeah. the right age. Anyway, um, so. And you got it. So there's the meaning of life. Find your purpose and ah, share it. Humbly and proudly return what you've been given. Aww. That's what the Franciscan Richard Rohr, my spiritual father, says is that's, the meaning of life. That's your spiritual father? Who else do you like? Have you ever studied Kabbalah? I actually know quite a bit about Judaism mm -hmm. and enjoy a lot of it. I was just reading um, a beautiful, oh, I wish I could remember it. But there's a line, there's a verse in Isaiah that nobody quotes, that Richard Rohr quotes, which is like, I'm ready to be found by those who don't study me. I'm ready to, like, I whisper, I'm here, I'm here to those who do not seek me. Wow, and is I that advertising like, your new show? <laughs> and it, it, it's, it didn't work. We should have been like, please watch Crashing. But I was all out there being Isaiah 26 about it. Like, you can watch it or not. And then we got canceled. But Isaiah 27, or we'll be canceled. Yes. You needed to include it that way. But I, that's just to say, that just this morning, I was enjoying the OT, as we call it. The OT? But what is Kabbalah, I'm not, it's like mystical Judaism. Yes, but this is it. When you walk in the room, are you turning the light on? Are you turning the light off of your light mm. and the light of the world? Are you sharing? Mm. Or are you being like a big dark? Like, are you taking it? That's so And funny. you're a big light giver. Oh, I love that. I want to hear the Isaiah quote again. I wish I could, I wish I... You just said it. Do I have it? Because I have so many copies of this book. And this book opens with this quote. I want to fudge. Oh, fudge. I don't have it. You know what? Can you Google uh, Isaiah... I whisper, I am here, I am here. Then if, if that's... You know who I want? Yeah, tell me. I want... Um, so I, I've been making a TV show for the last four or five months. Yeah. In my house. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be called No Good Deed. Mm. But that's already taken. That's but a good title. I know. Because it's really... It's like the opposite of Curb. I'm just too nice. Oh. And I get in trouble as a result. Oh, fun. Yeah. Anti-Curb. Anti-Curb. We're ready for an anti-Curb. Yeah. And would actually be anti-Curb. Anti-Curb. Have you seen Andy Curb on No Good Deed? I mean, Good but, Deed. You know Here's how I want you to play. Yeah. Oh, I'm on it. No. Yeah. I want you to play. I'm in it. I want you to play like a minister. Perfect. Perfect. I'll a non-denominational minister who's really funny. I'm ready. Who just basically has a calling to be a comedian, but even a bigger calling yeah. to be. Um, mm, you mean me if I had just one degree to the left? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. Okay, good. I'm in. I, I'm info. flattered and I love it. Did you find it? No, I'm, only, I'm not seeing anything with Whisper. Yeah, it might have been a loose translation. So 11 years, so I'm the last person you've never interviewed. You've gotten to everybody but me. That's one way to take it. <laughs> That's what Neil Brennan said. He was like, if Mark Maron asked me to do the podcast, I'd say no, because I, I don't want to be the 600th guest. And I was like, Neil, he's so fierce. He loves himself real fierce. Yeah. But sometimes I want to be like, that's not what it means. I have a podcast. Yeah. You're not the 700th, 700th person. Right. When I met you in Montreal, I was trying to play cool and be like, don't pitch the podcast now. Maybe I did. Did I? Because I've always wanted to talk to you because I did the Cleveland Improv with Jim Gaffigan over New Year's Eve in 2003. Uh -huh. And you had been there a few weekends earlier. And I saw that you did Friday 8 or 7.30 and 9 or whatever. And then Saturday, they do three shows. Uh -huh. It said, Caroline, 7.30, 9, and then the midnight show was someone else. <laughs> and I was like, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. And I and also just like growing up religious, seeing someone who was clean and, and, and had a bright light right. and wasn't just like a pirate. I love the pirates too. But you know what I mean? So I was like, I'm fascinated with people like you. That's why I wanted to talk about coming up. But like, oh, you were like a beacon of, of hope, <laughs> as was uh, Seinfeld and, and and Ellen. I know maybe not the sweetest person, but Ellen as well. And uh -huh. anybody that was being clean and kind of cheery, I was like, there's hope. There's there, there's room for a guy like, right. like me. And also, you don't have to do the midnight show because those midnight shows at the fucking Cleveland Improv, you know, you're just babysitting drunk people. And I loved your boundaries. <laughs> There I was admiring boundaries before we even used that word. We just went, what a bitch. <laughs> what a selfish. This, was, this is an impression of me at every third show now. Did I already tell you this joke? Did I say this already? It's funny you said Have that. Have I told this joke? Because Jim and I did a midnight show. Yeah. 
and he repeated a joke. Yeah. And I don't even think he knows. I was watching like... God, he's funny. I know, he's so funny. And he got off stage, I'll never forget it. One of my early teachers, he goes off stage and he did really well. Midnight show Saturday in Cleveland and he's not famous. Gets off stage and we're, you know, he's trying to do interesting stuff. And like, you know, the middle, who's great, but, you know, I say that to be nice, but like was murdering with like pretty, you know, regular stuff. And Jim's coming up trying to do something kind of more interesting. And... uh he does well and he gets off stage and he goes, I go, that was incredible. And he goes, it's all pace. He, and I, I looked back, I was like, he did, he did his act at double speed, like a podcast. Mm -hmm. And that's how he survived it. And I was like, that's a nice little lesson. I learned that that day. I did the like twelve twenty last night at the comedy store. That's what made me think of it. Yeah. And I was really like, Oh, Caroline, you're rushing. Cause you're, you're scared. Cause they're, they've seen so much comedy. Yeah. And then I was like, okay. It's just nice, you know, you inspired me comedically and then also in a way that it was like there's other voices that are welcome. And that was, and I appreciate that. Well, I love you and I feel like you're um, a kindred spirit. I, I don't know why I'm wrapping up your podcast, but I am. You can. <laughs> Nate Bargatze had a great joke about parking in New York. And he's like, when you're driving someone in Manhattan, they just want you to park anywhere. They're like, I think that's a spot. And he's like, there's a car on fire. Yeah, just park there. That's a hydrant. There's a cop. Just pull over here. It's such Isn't a good joke. Good? Nate is also one of those guys. And I yeah. came up with Nate. And here we are. You know, I say this with love, but in the bowels of Manhattan, early 2000s comedy, where everybody was, you know, we're talking the hard F word. I don't right. mean fuck. I mean like real rough stuff. Yeah. And Nate's getting up there being like, I'll have a watch. And it's not a pocket watch. You know, I love Nate. Right. But imagine you just followed... A squirting G spot oh, closer. Yeah. And now Nate's like, toothpicks, you put them in a sandwich. It's like the sandwich had something in its teeth. Or me doing the same kind of bit. It's rough. Oh, yeah, I, didn't I know you Nate something. started in New York. Nate started in Chicago. Uh, I'm very proud of this. Are you ready for me to be proud of myself? Yeah. Nate was in Chicago and then I moved to New York and he's like, I'm going to do what Pete did. Like he was, he, he said that. I, I, he said that. But I'm proud because he's one of the best he ever. And the fact that he was even admiring me a little bit or mirroring me a little bit. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to do whatever Pete does. And then he went to the club that I was at and he, we handed out flyers together. And I was, even then I was proud. I was like, because I, I thought he was incredible. Always help somebody when you can. I agree. Always, always, always. And that was Gaffigan for me too. And Gaffigan yeah. probably helped him as well. He told me, be undeniable. That was the best. Because be I be undeniable. He oh. said, just get so funny they can't ignore you. That that was his advice. Well, that yeah. I, I also what? think just don't tell a joke anyone else could tell. Yeah. And I, if they do steal your joke, they're not telling it. Like you gotta it's so clear from you that you know You know I who I heard that from? OBG OBG one M. Okay, this is my new, fa new favorite joke. Oh. And then you have to tell me your new favorite joke. I know my favorite joke, and it's an open micer, and I don't know no, their yours. name. Of mine. Yes. Go ahead. I think I'm ready to have a threesome. I don't care if it's a man or an extra woman. I just need someone to hold my neck back. <laughs> <laughs> and shh, don't talk. No. Nope. And you know what? It would probably be best if you just close your eyes. <laughs> that's very, very, very good. I'm trying to think of, that's like, you write such tight that's undeniable. Like your style is undeniable. It's like, oh, you have some feeling about me? You know what I mean? Speed bag. It's undeniable. It really is. It's like, oh, this is this is somebody who prepped. And I don't mean you feel rehearsed. You don't. You're loose and silly. But the the rapid <laughs> thing, not a lot of people are doing that. A lot of successful comedians aren't doing that many punchlines and that many, you know what I mean? Just just compliments. Enjoy a bunch of compliments. <laughs> trying to think of my favorite quick what is joke. your language of love you know i'm not even sure i have to write down what makes me happy i write it down i write down who i love i write down what makes me feel juice so you remember and happy so i remember because <laughs> sometimes when i'm blue and then i'm you like, look at your wife like you're not on the list yeah but you're gonna get there who's mike berbiglia i'm blue and my wife is like you know who could help you on like, mike berbiglia i don't know why i can't think i have one. Oh, i have a joke it's not like yours. It's a different style. But I go, I used to pull off the highway. I talk about Subway. And I remember when we all ate Subway sandwiches. I was like, we all love Subway sandwiches. And, and sometimes they don't clap. And I go, come on, don't leave me alone. I recall there being a line. 
And then I go, I used to pull off the highway to go to a subway and eat what I thought was a health food. And I was proud of myself. Like, I can't wait to tell my doctor I had a highway hoagie. Then I get my blood work done. He's like, your cholesterol's through the roof. And I go, check it again, dipshit. <laughs> That's my favorite line. And my opener, Matt McCarthy, we go, check it again, dipshit, all the time to each other. That's what your t-shirt should be. Check it again, dipshit. Yeah. I think calling your doctor specifically oh, a dipshit after you've been eating hoagies and he's showing you your, your cholesterol is... I got the whole joke, Pete. I, I got, no, I know. I know. <laughs> That's why I thought it was funny, because I understood. I know. <laughs> why am I telling it like a previously on, previously on your life? Remember when just a second ago? Okay, tell me about Kabbalah because we want to hear it. Or tell me about your spirituality right now. Here's a way in. Do you think it ends when we die? That's a that's an oh easy, God, easy way in. Oh my God, really? No, yeah. not, that's not a closer. Yeah, sure it is. It's literally the closer of all of us. It's how we all say goodbye. Well, that's a way in. It doesn't have to be. How about, do you have some... My whole point in doing stand-up is to raise your consciousness. I'm not trying to get a sitcom. I'm going to do my own show. I'm not trying to get a special. I'm not trying to get on Letterman. We have so many like objective goals when we first start. We're like, I'm going to be funny. I'm going to do this and this. I want to um, kind of literally lift your spirits in a time when the world is so crappy. Yeah. I want you to be a little happier than when you left. Yeah. And then you get incredibly kind things. Like this woman came up to me and said, my son has such PTSD from being in Afghanistan. You're the this is the first time he's laughed in nine months. I can't thank you enough. And then you feel like you're the luckiest person in the world that you get to do that. That's right. I love that so much. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I'm the same way. Yeah. And when I'm unembarrassed and writing down what I'm earnestly trying to do with stand up is I'm like, I want people to feel less alone. Yeah. And I'd like to sprinkle in a little bit of hope too. Yes. Yeah. And also sharing. Yeah. You're sharing your heart and soul. And also like you're, you're very good at sort of subtly teaching. I appreciate that. Yeah. And that's what took some getting over. I had to be like, don't be embarrassed. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. Well, everybody gets to say what they want to talk about. You want to talk about the meaning of life, you do it. Yeah. Because I think people can tell when I was religious, I would be doing it because I thought I was supposed to be doing it. We've all heard of those comics that end with like a altar call. Mm -hmm. Like every once in a while in the 80s, there'd be a guy that had a born again moment and yeah. it's it, like lead them in the Lord's prayer or something. And it wasn't funny or it was weird. But I'm just like... It's insincere if that's all I think. It's what I think about most of the time. It's what I read about most of the time. So it's going to come into the comedy. It would be insincere to not do right. that. And I think they can feel that. Comedy is a healing art. Yeah. We get to heal people's hearts and moods and, yeah. you know. I agree. I have a line in my act right now, too, where I, I, say, I say something about whatever, trauma. And then I go, and that's not very funny because it's not. And I go, but it's relatable. And I go, but if you leave here feeling less alone, that's my job too. And everybody loves it. And I love that they love it. I do too. And I love that, I don't know. I'm I've just... been saying lately, I go, when I said, in this hour that we're together, I said, I don't care who you voted for. Yeah. If you fell on the ground in front of me, I would go to pick you up. I wouldn't think to ask you which party you were in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we have so much more in common than we have this stupid divisive nonsense. So I, I I so agree with you. Okay, uh, my minister, who I was really close to, in New York, he was at um, Marble Collegiate, and he was Norman Vincent Peale's assistant minister for like twenty six years. Keegan Michael Key's partner. Um, power of positive thinking. Okay. But very often, yeah. Um, <laughs> so funny. Anyway, I did this joke about something about sex, some sex, whatever. And I caught my minister's eye just at the end of that joke. And I didn't acknowledge that I'd seen him. And I just said, and now, as always, I would like to end my show with the Lord's Prayer. And, yes. <laughs> and then he looked at me and he goes, I know you saw me. <laughs> After the show? I need that so hard. I get it. You know what? That's my save line is if I get catch myself, because sometimes I do just... You know, on the road, I'll just start talking about the prodigal son, or I'll tell it with jokes. I know, but it's so interesting. I appreciate it. It's not It's not going to make the hour. I can feel it. But if, if it doesn't end on a laugh, and I did this on my special, I'll just go, let's pray. And that's always my save. If I catch myself, because I do, I get carried away. Dear Lord, please have these people Heavenly understand what that joke really yeah, is yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and have them not feel terrible that they were not smart enough to understand it's what I was like, talking about. It's kind of like what Gaffigan does. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're talking fine. to God. Yeah, instead you're talking to God. Who else could we be talking to? <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have to go eat something. Now. Yeah, let's gonna... get the fuck out of here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can I give you one quote from Richard Rohr yeah, for our spiritual please. fulfillment? Uh, so I, I'm going to give it this preface. So much of us think God is mad. My whole thing is dad's not mad. Get over it. Dad's not mad. In fact, the whole message is drop the guilt, drop the shame, and remember that you're a beloved child of God. That's the whole thing. But Richard Rohr said, because we thought we had to be good. Oh, always. And Richard says, uh, God doesn't love you because you are good. God loves you because God is good. And that's the whole thing. Right. What, what, what else do you need? I know. And I just try to remember that all the time. It's so weird, though, that you can get very... I, I remember realizing that you don't wake up awake. Mm. You know what I mean? That you have to choose to be consciously awake every day. Yeah. Otherwise, you are a robot in one second. That's right. Especially when you're going through the chore phase of life. or. But having a child is like the biggest awakening gift. Like, I agree. Especially... At that age. Because you see how so... engaged she is. I agree. We're the same. <laughs> Comedy fantasy camp. Google it. <laughs> we don't know the URL. Google it. And go do comedy with Caroline Ray. Go and learn how to be a comedian. If and that's Jay Leno dream. and Adam Carolla. I'm a very nurturing teacher, so. I would. I will... <laughs> I'll I bring would out the best love in you. that. Yes, you can, and yes, you will. What? And no, I can't wait to watch your special now, the latest one. Oh, I hope you like it. I'm not for everyone. I'm not for everyone. I know, but that's funny that that's even your choice. I know, but I wanted a title that was like, oh, if I like him, I'm in the group. So am right. I? Am I in the group? Mine, the opposite. I identify as a witch. <laughs> Perfect. Would you say keep it crispy? It's just how we sign off. As in, keep it crispy, cream. The fresh ones. Early in the see, morning. Oh, please. I could see the light for 100 miles. <laughs> like a beacon of hope. It's an old Roseanne joke, but like when you get directions from, from a person who loves food, I think she says a fat person, uh -huh. but she goes like, uh, you know, there's a McDonald's three blocks this way. Go right. When you pass the Papa Gino's, take two. Isn't that funny? I know someone like that. And it's very similar to a Ram, uh, Ram Dass bit or whatever mm -hmm. you want to say. He always goes, if you're hungry, you see restaurants. If you're horny, you see people you can have sex with. And he's, he's talking about what we're talking about. It's like right. you're running a program and it, you're not seeing reality. Right. You're looking through this filter. Anyway, say keep it crispy. Let's get the fuck out of here. Keep it crispy. <laughs> the woman was strong. Uh, <laughs> you made it win. You made it win.